Why, hello there, gamers. I know it's been a little bit. Why can I not hear the volume? Oh, there we go. Uh, so let me get into the new game. But this is the last route of Resident Lover. Welcome, welcome. Uh, I'm happy and sad that this is the last route. Uh, I'm happy to be playing all of them, but I'm sad that this will be the final route of this game. Uh, I really look forward to more games. Uh, welcome, welcome. And I hope that they do make more dating sims, because I really like this one. Uh, and I still have Village to finish. I'll probably finish Village on Saturday. But now I kind of have an inkling of who the characters are because I started playing Village. But this is the final route. It was recommended to play this route last. I believe this is the longest route, I think. Because um, when I glanced at the guide, I, didn't, I haven't like fully looked at the guide. Thank you for the lurk. Uh, it looked like the longest route. So let us get into it then. I know it's been a bit since uh, I streamed. Uh, my girlfriend Monica came over to visit, so I didn't really stream much. We're going to fast track through here. I don't know why the game is so quiet. Hold on. Uh, see, I don't have the music that loud because, I don't know, for some reason I keep getting like copyright claims on the music for this game. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, so I'm tr trying to keep the music volume down just, just a little bit. Because it's always, like, random claims. Okay. And we're going to be going through the Scholar route. Because I think there's two ways to get to Miranda's route, but Scholar one is the easiest. If you haven't seen any of the other routes, I have them all on my YouTube channel. There's a full playlist of them. Yes, we want to do the Scholar route. Uh, I'm going to skip to the point where we get to Miranda's route. We're going to go to the library. Okay. And now we have officially started Miranda's route. Unfortunately, you care too much about your grades. To the library, it is. You're going to ace your classes or die trying. You won't waste the scholarship that was granted to you, although part of you really does not want to actually do all the that work. But the payout might just be worth it in the end. When you look at your required classes for the year, you squint at one in particular. Great. First you'll move in, then you'll investigate this economics three. You didn't do so hot on the first two. Economics? Nah, we're screwed. If they ask me any sort of economic questions, we're done, chat. I don't know anything about economics. Math is literally my worst subject of all time. So we are completely screwed <laughs> if I have to answer any math questions. I'm going to tell you that right now. Egg! Welcome, Egg. Alright. Let's continue. The Celtic Cross. Situation. The Fool. You walk around the area searching for a specific book needed for your economics class. It's incredibly elusive, and you find yourself getting a little frustrated with the scenario. What's 9 plus 10? 21? <laughs> Easy one! Come on! Give me an actual hard one, chat! Asking me these baby questions. 9 plus 10. We all know it's 21. As you walk, you can hear the librarian's voice go up about three octaves for some reason. Is someone bothering her? You shake your head and continue searching for the book that refuses to be found. Also, I apologize if you can slightly hear my fan. It is a thousand degrees in my stream room at the moment. Uh, I don't know why. I've closed off the vent to my heat because it is just boiling in here soon enough you give up exasperately throwing your hands up accidentally knocking down a few books you'd think that the books would be fine but for some reason the school only has books that look like they've outlasted several generations so it's with honor that you reach out to catch them before they hit the ground what are we spider-man goddamn remember that scene in spider-man one where peter just catches the lunch even though it's like 30 feet in the air that's that's what i'm doing apparently Maybe that's why, like, I can survive this school. I'm secretly Spider-Woman. <laughs> Lest they disintegrate like the ancient material they are. 
You managed to catch two, but the third one crashed into the ground and splits in the middle. Ah, crap. We're gonna have to pay a fee. Oh, my. Your head snaps to attention so fast. You worry you've given yourself whiplash. The new person inspects the thoroughly ruined book with thinly veiled irritation. I must apologize, but the librarian needs to be informed of this. The woman glances back down. I was like, what is that word? Discretion of property. Please don't. You beg the mysterious woman. If she tells the librarian, you'll be banned. If you're banned, you'll never pass your classes. And it would be such a shame if you didn't find that economics book after all this effort. Well, if you give me a reason, then perhaps I can keep it to myself. You're grasping at straws here, but you need the library. The closest bookshop is about five miles away, and that is so much gas or exercise, God forbid. I'll do anything. This, this is a not safe for work scenario in the making right here. This is such like a hub website scenario. <laughs> All the others are like innocent, cute, like we're down bad. Now we're just stumbling into a hub scenario. <laughs> and, any, anything at all. Oh, uh, see, look at this. Okay, yep, yep, all right, all right. Well, not anything illegal. That's a shame. However, I have just the thing. My assistant ran out crying this morning. The poor thing couldn't handle the job, and I am in desperate need of a new one. And you, despite the poor treatment of that book, seem to be capable. Classic literature, war strategy, and going off on your desperate expression from before. You're searching for the Economics 3 assigned textbook? Yes, would you happen to know where it is? Oh, we haven't had that book for two years. Not since Angela Beneviento got drunk on the property and set the whole section on fire. You went at the mention of your roommate. That does sound like her. The woman you still haven't gathered the name of doesn't seem to notice and instead is looking at you expectantly. Oh, right. Well, I said I'd do anything. Delightful. I trust you know where the building is. Before you can say otherwise, the striking blonde woman is walking away and out of range. Huh. In a daze, you head back to your dorm, exasperation with Angie filling your mind. It's her fault you're going to fail economics. Hey, what's got you in a daze? What? You hit the doorframe, didn't you feel it? Now that she points it out, your shoulder does ache a little. Did you really not feel it? I did Angie- <laughs> Oh, god, this sentence here. I- did Angie light the economics section on the li of the library on fire? I forgot you were in economics. I remember when Flowerhead snuck into the library while drunk and lit a section on fire. Her aunt got really mad, like I'd never seen her. <laughs> I've, I don't think she's ever called her Flowerhead before, that's strange. By now you know that if you let her go on and on, she'll never stop, so it's with practiced ease you interrupt her. Well, while I was searching for the book that apparently isn't there anymore, I accidentally knocked one down and it split. Yikes. I know, and this woman catches me and blackmails me into being her assistant or something. Apparently her assistant quit this morning? Anyways, I was wondering if you knew who she was. What'd she look like? Blonde, scary, blue eyes. Did I mention scary? Uh-oh. What? That's headmistress Miranda. What? Yeah... Daniela, I swear to every god, if you don't tell me more. Okay, okay, jeez. Where's Flower when you need her? Just as you're about to do, well, something. You didn't actually have a threat in mind. You just bluffed and hoped she'd believe it. Danny clears her throat and gestures for you to sit down. Trust me, this is gonna take a while. The next day, you find yourself standing in her office, anxiously waiting for her return. She had seen you come into the doors and immediately made it obvious why her previous assistant had run out the way run out the way she had so far you've gone out three coffee runs the first time was too much sugar the second time it was too cold and the third time she said it's better than nothing i suppose you've had two pens thrown at you and now she's disappeared you startle when she returns with a bang her door hits the wall mercilessly and idly you, you note that the lock has made a permanent hole in the drywall something they clearly didn't bother to fix what are you doing just sitting there what am I meant to be doing? Your job. 
Frustration clouds your vision as you literally, as you have literally no idea what you've meant to be doing at this point. You've never been an assistant, and so far, all you've seen is that apparently it involves a lot of harassment on the person who needs assistance's part. I can get on that when you actually tell me what my job entails. Oh, little bird doesn't know what to do. Something on your face must show how close you are to just leaving and taking the library ban. Five miles isn't that bad in comparison, because she gets serious and beckons you over. You'd imagine replacing an assistant twice in two days would be a hassle. She directs you through her ridiculously insane coffee order that absolutely matches her tedious personality. Afterwards, she tells you the daily assignments that need to be completed within the time frame you have between classes. Finally, she informs you that you have to ask her for the day's specific task, which horrifies you. You can't help but note that she was picking on you for something she knew you didn't know how to do, but you value your life, so you kept quiet. Oh, Bella! She's here. There's a knock on the door, and you look up in time just to see another student near your age peek her head in. Head Mistress Miranda, I have the files you were asking for about the student council. Yes, yes, come in. My assistant can wait outside. She gives you a pointed look, and you barely keep yourself from rolling your eyes. Welcome, welcome. You make eye contact with a member of student council, who looks to be almost begging you to stay anyways. An understanding seems to pass between you anyways as you close the door behind you. You hover outside the office, nodding to the other student body that seem to look you with look at you with pity in their eyes. Jesus Christ, that scared the shit out of me. <laughs> I don't know why that was so loud. Thanks for following my dude. After about ten minutes, the quiet voices from inside the room get louder and louder. There's a crash before the blonde opens the door and runs, looking far too practiced in the matter. Cautiously, you approach the door and creep into the office. What? Miranda seems pissed. What do you do? Uh, well, I don't think making a joke is going to help, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to soothe her. Uh, I'm sure whatever happened can be fixed. You didn't get to be the headmistress without having some sort of problem solving, right? Miranda looks up at you incredulously, letting out a strange noise before closing her eyes and breathing slowly. Yeah, so I suppose you're correct. You survived! Put these in the file room. The system is fairly obvious. Come back when you're done. You travel to the file room and figure it out rather quickly, shocked that she hadn't blatantly lied to your face. On your way back, you find the blonde sitting on a bench looking absolutely destroyed. Ah, I'm sure she didn't mean what she said. You, uh, know how she can be. The blonde looks up at you and nods, almost sagely at your word. You must have to deal with- she must have to deal with her a lot. Yeah, you're new. About four hours, ready to quit. The blonde laughs. It's oddly forced, as if she's never laughed before. It doesn't get better. She gets up and leaves while you watch for a moment, before turning and making your way back to the main office where Miranda tyrannically resides. When you step into the office, Miranda looks up with a raised brow. That hard? Something t I mean, what are you asking about? <laughs> wink, wink. Nudge, nudge. She'd probably kill you if you actually said that. Something tells you that if you speak about your and the other student's conversation, nothing good will come of it, so all you do is nod. Took me a few minutes to figure it out and sort it properly. They were a little mixed up. Miranda gets a sour look on her face before it goes back to her usual expression of superiority. Yes, my previous assistant was quite poor at her job. Perhaps she was, or perhaps Miranda was such a monster of an employer she self-sabotaged to get away without quitting and likely getting harassed for it. Either way, you won't judge. You're only on day one, and who knows how long the previous assistant was around. Maybe she had dealt with years of this treatment. Oh, the thought alone makes you shudder with terror. Anyway, I believe you're done for the day. Go ahead and return to whatever ridiculous things you do in your spare time. You ignore the jab and gather your things, moving as quick as possible without alerting the woman that you're affected by her pointless mockery. Looking forward to your yelling tomorrow. Bright and early. J Jesus. They're shrieking before an awful thump resounds in the room. The table has been pushed to the side for the moment, and multiple figures crowd around the bleeding body. 
It seeps into the floor before disappearing, seemingly. I found her. Perhaps, but it only worked for one. The central figure hisses, the shadow behind them looming, the floor littered with feathers of different varieties. It worked once. We can make it work again. And the girl? Why did we kill her, mother? Because we needed blood. We're going to need a lot of it. Leave her for 24 hours before moving her to my lamb. She'll be up again by next week. Oh, and get the keeper, will you? Yes, mother. Challenge the magician. See, I know somewhat about, like, was it the arcana cards? Because of Jojo, Persona. It's very common in, like, anime and gaming. Gaming gamers. You drag yourself out of bed and groan as you look at the time. It's only been a week, but you're absolutely prepared to kill this woman. Her schedule is atrocious, and you're being forced to suffer along with her. Just like yesterday and the day before, you wonder if it's worth the trouble to go to the coffee kiosk and force them to make her order. And just like yesterday and the day before, you decide it's not worth the trouble of being eviscerated by Miranda. As you wait for the line to shorten, you check your watch anxiously. If you're caught even a second late, it'll haunt you for the rest of the day your days, probably even after you graduate. She'd send a ridiculous envelope and you'd open it, only to find a reminder of the one time you were late. Suddenly, the people in front of you groan in irritation. A few muttering choice words about the kiosk. You lean to the side, and there's a sign that indicates that they're closed. You check the time again before throwing your head back. There isn't compromise Miranda would make, because this psychotic woman doesn't make compromises. You make the unfortunate decision to run to the cafe and pray that you'll live through the consequences of being late. Hello, what would you like? Have you ever made an order for an assistant at around this time? They probably look traumatized. Ah, headmistress Miranda from the school. Yes, I can get that for you. Do you want something to eat? You look pale. Uh, sure. Yes, please. Just a muffin, though. I'm already late. Coming right up. May you live through this day. She walks away from you, leaving you to wonder if that's too much of a tall order to be able to make through the day. When she's done with the coffee, she waits for you to pay before handing it to you alongside a muffin that you wolf down far too quickly for your health, leaving you with the hiccups for the moment being- Oh god. I hate it when you get the hiccups. Dude, I once had the hiccups for like 45 minutes. I thought I was actually gonna die because I could not breathe. A traumatizing time, honestly. I, I, I honestly get traumatized every time I get the hiccups because I keep thinking that it'll last for like 45 minutes and I'll just slowly die of hiccuping. You check how full the cup is before speed walking the way to the office. You slip inside the door just before it closes and count to ten before entering Miranda's office. You're late. Sorry, the kiosk closed so I had to run to the cafe. That isn't my problem. Perhaps you should wake up earlier. There's a moment where you seriously consider picking up the scissors on her desk and jabbing them straight into her carotid artery and watch her bleed on the floor. Welcome, welcome. However, that would cut your free college short, and you refuse to let her win. Perhaps. Gritting your teeth, you set the coffee down lightly on her desk. She inspects it with thinly veiled doubt. Hmm, looks different than usual. I wonder, will this be another strike to add to your list? Miranda picks up the coffee and takes a sip before she sends a glare in your direction. You have the terrible notion that she hates it and wait for the sweet release of death, but instead of something like that happening, she takes another sip. It's acceptable. Ha! You like it! Miranda makes a sour face, but doesn't deny it. She's been outsmarted this time. Internally, you do a victory dance, but outwardly maintain your smug demeanor. Imagine just doing, like, a Fortnite dance right in front of her. She'd probably definitely stab us right there. Before it can escalate further, you return to the small station in the corner for office and begin your daily regiment of useless paperwork and being vaguely mistreated. It starts innocently enough, actually. Miranda hands you a stack of papers to file. Nothing too ridiculous or out of the job description for an average assistant. I mean, we're not even getting paid for this. We're just, like, doing this to not be blackmailed. Like, at what point is this really worth it? Because we're not getting paid. Honestly, I don't do shit for free. That's how I live my life. Get your bags. Why are you running? Why are you running? The better question is, why aren't I running? I should be running away from this woman. 
Let's be honest, chat. Would you stay and be her assistant? I definitely wouldn't. I'd rather just flunk the class and go home. Because this sounds like torture. Free labor? No, no, no. It starts innocently enough, actually. Oh, I've read this. Dumb. So without complaint, you take the papers and file them idly, almost spacing out due to the tedious nature of it. When you return, she says nothing, and you sit at your excuse of a desk that's more like an end table she randomly chose to make her assistant's life harder. She gives you another stack of papers that she just had mercilessly blown through. However, you apparently had taken too much time for her taste. She begins her crusade. I didn't know the alphabet was so difficult for you. What if I am dyslexia? Now you're just being ableist. What a bitch. Your hand twitches, but you give her nothing but silence. Miranda goes back to her work like it never happened. While you, while you count to ten very slowly, ten minutes later she finds another problem. Yeah, she she's definitely on a high horse. Maybe about ten high horses. Have you been moving my pens around? No, I have my own pens. You would never give her another reason to goad you. Then why are my pens in the wrong order? She can't be serious. The red is supposed to be here. Now everything is wrong. Miranda frets over the order of her pens for about six minutes, giving you enough time to conclude that, yes, the order of her pens matter, and you should add that to your daily regimen. You suppose that she can't, can't help her OCD, that she clearly has, so maybe it's not something to be irritated about. However, it piles up. She finds another problem. There's too much light in here. Go put the curtains up. I can actually relate to this. I have light sensitivity. I can't be in rooms with, with light for too long. Like, I don't think I ever turn the lights on in my stream room unless if I have to record videos. That's the only time I put lighting on. My bedroom, I never have the lights on. If I could have blackout curtains 24-7, I would. I, I cannot stand being in the light. You sign stand arranging the curtains in a way that blocks most of the sun. More. Closing your eyes, you just knock them to where they've completely blocked out the sun. Too much. I still need light. Then use a lamp like every other person. The moment the words leave your mouth, your heart stops. You are so going to die. Miranda inspects you for a moment, anger written clear in her eyes before it disappears like mist. Exactly. The darkness. Our old friend. You're still standing and she's still staring at you, but the tension between you feels like a ticking time bomb. You roll your eyes before walking back to the desk, muttering for her to figure it out herself before plopping down and waiting for your in imminent firing and subsequent banning from the library. Instead, Miranda blinks once, then twice, and turns back to her work as if nothing happened. Well, better than nothing. The following hours of you steadily ignoring your schoolwork pass in utter silence. Miranda doesn't complain once, but you do feel incredibly awkward and anxious. Her silence is off-putting and is making you twitchy. The workday finally ends and you gather your things in the same silence that you had been drowning in before. Looking forward to going back to your loud and borderline obnoxious dorm mates. Damn, we just hate our roommates in this? That's not very nice. You don't acknowledge her at all and reach for the door, fully intending to just leave. You pull on the door only to hear a sharp th thunk as it moves but doesn't open. Frowning, you pull it again only to be met with the same result. What is it that they say about the definition of insanity? <laughs> Far Cry reference? You scowl, but relief fills you at the same time. You're alive and she seems back to her normal self. You try it then. Miranda rolls her eyes and stands like she has all the answers. And this will be a breeze. She pulls her expression already smug, but much to your amusement, her attempts to meet the same fate as your previous. It thunks, but doesn't open. You're locked in. Let me get a sip of water real quick. Miranda looks to be contemplating something. Her hand twitches towards the knob as if she's planning to yank the door out of the hinges just to get you out. But she turns to you and you feel silly. Of course, she's not going to do that. Nobody can do that. Exactly. Always gotta stay hydrated. It seems we're stuck together for the time being. Hmm. What should you do? Work more? Play on your phone? You pull out your phone and find it has no service and you have left an app open the whole day and its battery is critically low. It won't last more than five minutes. Nah, nah, you can't be doing that. See, my phone is about like three? No, it's four years old now. It's I think I got my phone in 2020. I have a Galaxy. That battery life, it is it is 
non-existent. I don't even have to have anything open, and I need to charge it, like, twice a day. I am also, like, always on my phone, so that doesn't help. Miranda looks back at her work, but for once, oddly, like, she would rather do anything other than sit back down and look through more requests. Why do you go through them personally? The question slips out before you can stop yourself. You sound interested, and interested implies a lot of things you're not. I take my work very seriously. If you were in the habit of imagining things, you might have thought she sounded offended by your implication. But since you know better, you simply raise a brow in the most taunting way you can think of. Yeah, I, I've thought about replacing my phone, but I'm like, it's kind of annoying replacing phones because of like all the things you have saved on it. And they're also extremely expensive. Everyone keeps quitting, don't they? That I... It is none of your concern. You shrug, wandering about aimlessly, making sure to touch as many things as possible to make Miranda twitch even further. You don't move anything in the worrisome case. She'd murder you or fly you into a panic attack, but you do make it seem like you intend to. She falls for it exactly twice before wishing, w wising to your antics. It was worth it. What is the next point where someone would enter this office? It won't be for a while. Not an answer, but you're supposed. But you suppose she's not lying. She's considering how discontented she looks with the situation. The two of you sit in an awkward silence before you decide. At least start studying for your upcoming exam, pulling out your textbook. However, it seems to have garnered Miranda's attention. Her eyes squint as if she's trying to read the textbook title from across the room. She opens her mouth to say something, but snaps it shut a moment later. Then standing and making her way towards you. What class is that for? She must be really bored. You open your mouth to tell her, but she's already moved on, seemingly invested in your educational choices. Hmm, I see. I suppose. I must ask, what is your major? Uh... Fuck it, anatomy. Oh, you might not be so bad after all. I remember. She gets lost in thought for a moment before looking at you as if you're an entirely new person. Before actually smiling at you. Why does your phone have to be almost dead? You need a camera for proof. Hmm, perhaps I misjudged you. Her response make your, makes your stomach churn in anxiety for reasons you can't be bothered to focus on at the moment. And all you want to is to get out of this office and away from her, her, your temperamental boss slash headmistress. But what could help with that other than some seriously convenient timing by staff? You focus the best you can and frown when you come up, early, come up empty. Irritably, you notice your shirt drops slightly. It's not quite fitting you, leading you to have to constantly adjust it. You wish you had a paperclip or something to keep it in place, even a bobby pin. Bobby pin! Bobby pin? Yes, do you have any bobby pins? We could try to unlock, pick the lock. Which, by the way, how is it possible that we got locked in? Why don't you, the doors have that little twist? The It doesn't matter. Do you have any bobby pins? Somewhere, most likely. We'd have to look for them. I mean... It, oh, yeah, sure. That's fine. Something to do, right? Miranda seems perturbed by your sudden energy, but for once in her life, she doesn't argue with you and instead aids in your search. Somehow, idle conversation is made and she only insults you four times. A personal record. Do you know how to pick locks? Yes. Why? It doesn't matter why. Your face heats up and she doesn't need to know about your late nights on YouTube. It's embarrassing enough as it is. <laughs> Say hi, YouTube. We're having youtube -ception. Uh, and suspicious now that you think about it. Mm. With a scowl, you turn and continue to search. You'll even accept a paperclip, but they're more likely to break. Miranda hums behind you, which makes you irrationally angry, but you manage to keep your mouth shut. However, as their humming continues, you begin to try and place the song, losing your precarious focus Ugh, Excuse me. on finding a bobby pen or paperclip. What is she humming? It doesn't sound like anything too modern, yet it's incredibly familiar. What are you humming? Curious, are you? Ugh, never mind. You turn to walk to the other side of the room in the hopes of regaining your focus and bearing as far away as possible from Miranda. But in the corner of your eye, you see something on a stack of papers. Aha! Close enough. Reach for the paper clip, only to get your hands smacked away by Miranda, who's really towing the line between insufferable and absolutely murderable. Don't touch those. 
Oh, do you want to spend the night with me? What? You cock your hip and raise a brow in defiance, letting her know that you were messing with her also, while, while also proving your point. Fine, go on. You pull the paperclip off, unwind it, making it into a straight line before kneeling by the door and beginning the process. After each bend, Miranda looks more and more intrigued by your actions, and when the door clicks and creaks open, she hums in a pleased manner. I've never seen you so focused. What can I say? You bring out the worst in me. When you take a step out, you're met with a late worker. Oh, I was about to check all the rooms. Of course. You leave the building, and as soon as you step out, you sprint back to your dorm. You need sleep or alcohol. Something makes you turn around, and when you do, you see Miranda leaving the building as, well, your continued presence must have tired her out. But when she looks at you... Ugh, I swear I'm not that tired. Jeez. But when she looks at you, you're hit with something star light startlingly human before it freezes over. Quickly, you turn your head, running that image in your head a few times. What was that? You knew this could happen. Still, no memories at all, not even familiarity. The Oracle and the Watcher warned you it would be difficult. You're playing the Devil's Game, which does so happen to be both my forte and my favorite. It is upsetting, but I will figure out how to fix it. Delightful, may I? In our shared years, you have never asked, Devourer. Oh, right. The figure snatches a small item from Mother and inspects it carefully. Hmm, this will do for now. Pardon me, Mother, but our resident toxo toxicologist wants to speak with you. She's upset about the work again. Focus, the High Priestess. I think that's... Is that Ons? Persona? No, hers is the Lovers, I'm dumb. High Priestess, is that Haru? I'm trying to remember who that is in Persona. Or is that Makoto? It's one of the girls, I think. Gotta stay hydrated. I feel super dehydrated for some reason. Danny, where's my sweater? I don't know, why? Because I need it. For what? Wearing? Angie rolls her eyes cheerfully while Danny tilts her head. Are there other needs for sweaters? No, Danny. If work can spiral into another debacle of chaos, you throw your head back, resigning yourself to the fact that it's missing, and you will not be finding it today. Okay, Angie, it's six in the morning. That's true. I'm, I'm just not good at reading out loud either. So I'm putting maximum brain power into it. It's never too early to drink. I, you know what? I'm going to work. Have fun. You give them the middle finger as you walk out. Their input isn't appreciated. Welcome back, weary, weary traveler. You stop, register the joke, and smile. Same as usual. You sure? You look like you could use a boost. You close your eyes and thought. You had been awake. You had been wide awake a few minutes ago, but the adrenaline high from your doormates has worn off, and the consistent early mornings and late nights are catching up to you. You make a great point. Saleswoman of the year? Most definitely. All right, what will you have? Uh... Ooh, I really like hot chocolate, especially Dunkin' Donuts hot chocolate. Hot chocolate. A classic. You lean back and idly survey the cafe while you wait for the order. The cafe is very is busy, very busy, as it usually is, and every customer that comes in says hello to Elena like they're old friends. Does she even leave the cafe? Here's your order, complete with a side coffee with two and a half pumps of vanilla. A shot of espresso put at the bottom with the other three quarts of a capsule of hazelnut creamer mixed with a latte with almond milk. This woman is a psychopath. This can't taste good. You're telling me. You take the coffee gratefully, downing your own cup as quickly as humanly possible before double checking Miranda's. Once again, you had a, you, wishing you had a car to avoid this daily sprint with a full cup of coffee, you set your pace and hope you're on time just as any other day. What you do not expect is to turn a corner and run smack into Miranda of all people. Oh, this will be good. She blinks at you, offended at your existence, and you can't even find it in yourself to be irritated back. Watch yourself. It's better compared to the way she practically murdered the student councilman who accidentally brushed shoulders with her, so you'd say you're winning. 
She looks at the coffee set in your hand and manages the smallest smile, more like a flat line, and reaches for it. At least we didn't spill it on her. That would have probably definitely gotten us killed. Effectively snatching it out of your hand with skill and precision. Change of plans. We're going back to that little shop you go to. Head held high. There is no room for an argument, and you find yourself reluctantly trailing after the blonde. You worry for Elena. Welcome. She stops at your face before slowly looking over to your companion. It's her. She whispers like it's she's met someone famous or perhaps discovered a conspiracy. It's me. Are you making my coffee in the morning? Elena straightens and looks positively petrified. But she stays strong, which is honestly better than what you would be capable of in this moment. Yes, have been for a couple of years now. Again, how long has Elena been here? Is she a permanent fixture of this town? Miranda hums, but doesn't comment further. Electing instead of inspect to inspect the baked goods. Something is off about her, though. It takes a few moments to realize just what it is. She hasn't insulted you once. Can I ask why we're back here? I don't know. Can you? You would like to fight her. One successful fight, please. On the fly. I was hungry. She looks perturbed by the fact, as if being hungry was odd for her. You hate this woman. However, you accept that this is happening now, and you decide to sit and wait for her to pick something, something, eat it, throw a fit over some perceived imperfection. She and Elena have a tense conversation that consists of Miranda being herself and Elena handling it flawlessly. The bell rings, and you turn your head before your eyebrows shoot up. Oh, hello. Hi. She can be pleasant, but she can also be tedious to deal with if you're being completely honest. The two of you get to talking, mostly so you don't have to suffer through Miranda ruining Elena's morning even further, and predictably Anna Maria brings her boyfriend up. I know it sounds bad, but he but really he's just hurt. It sounds bad because it is. Mm-hmm. But Anna Maria has made it clear in the few conversations you've overheard that she is highly uninterested in advice on how to deal with her emotionally damaged boyfriend. Well, not the emotionally damaged boyfriend. How are things with you? Um, you glance at Maria out of the corner of your eyes. She shifts ever so slightly. Great, she's listening. They're okay. And Maria slightly glances at Miranda as if to say, I know you're lying. Well, Miranda takes a moment to, in no uncertain terms, physically move on Maria out of her way and demand your attention. We're going back. She spares Anna Maria a glance. Anna Maria. Headmistress Miranda. You watch the interaction with bated breath. They're both so strange, but in the exact opposite kind of way. They should be studied if you're going to be completely honest. Anna Maria parts ways with you, with the two of you, and you make sure to wait a good minute before you can no longer hold it in. I hate it when I run into her. Do you know? Completely missing the vaguely friendly way Miranda's speaking to you, you continue. Yes, all she does is talk about her extremely unstable boyfriend and how in love she is with him. It's ridiculous. I don't truly enjoy running into her myself. Have you ever heard a story about him? Any? Any of them at all? She will casually drop a bomb about her boyfriend setting her house on fire and then gets confused when someone tells her to either get him a therapist or leave him. We are, we are calling out some of the girlies. I feel like... Uh, yeah... I there's there's situations like this out there. Maybe not the burn the house down part, but the your partner needing therapy part. You're practically twitching when you sit down, still irritated and bothered by the interaction. Miranda, however, sends, seems endlessly amused with your pain. Yes, it sounds very frustrating. Thank you. Takes a minute to settle in before you realize you've had an entire conversation with Miranda, and not once have you thought about killing her. Hate brings people together, it seems. Although, I'm sure you're the same with whatever boy toy you have. Implying that I'm straight? How dare she? You bark out a laugh at that. Trust me, never gonna happen. Oh. Not really my thing, boy toys, that is. You scrunch your nose up at the word, but... Use it nonetheless. What the fuck? <laughs> what the hell was that? She regards you almost uncomfortably before she tilts her head with a very unnerving smile before it's gone. 
good to know. After such an odd start, the two of you settle into something familiar. Oh, before I go, somebody came and asked after Eva. Miranda goes dead so still. Thank you. You begin packing up after giving Miranda a strange look at the pleasantry. And just as you're about to lift your bag, Miranda speaks again. By chance, have you heard of any strange groups roaming around the campus? Uh, no, can't say that I have. Miranda seems oddly pleased with this. Does she have a history with strange groups parading around the already strange school? Good. You hesitantly leave afterwards, brows furrowed in confusion and bit of trepidation. Shaking your head, you resolve to go back to your dorm and sleep. Angie, I swear to all that is holy, if you do not get out of that tree, don't be a buzzkill. I can't babysit you and go to work. Just as it seems, the bickering will never end. Someone coughs behind you. Please get down. Angie cusses and proceeds to speed down the tree as if possessed. Well, you promised to be less reckless. Sorry. I have to go. Thank you. Oh, this is my aunt. Donna. Thank you, Donna. You nod your head once and intentional internally congratulate yourself. You didn't stare at her scar too much and managed to and managed to not mention it in the conversation. You shake yourself lightly, coffee in hand before entering the office, and immediately stop dead in your tracks. Miranda is in yesterday's clothes, her head her hair is spread around in a messy halo, and she is sprawled out on her desk. She fell asleep while working. You stare at her for a moment before pondering what you should do next before you roll your shoulders and commit. No time like the present to send yourself to your extremely painful and violent doom. Ma'am? Hmm. An awkward pause fills the room as you hope that this was enough to wake her from her nap. Because you're quite sure you're not... Because you're quite sure no good amount of sleep was had last night going off of the messy paper stacks accompanying her on the desk. Had Mistress Miranda? Nothing. You like it on the record that she made you do this. Miranda! She shoots up from where she was sitting. Papers go flying off her desk into a terrible disarray that you'll know you'll have to organize later. She tries to stand a little too fast on her heels and ends up tipping herself over again, almost crashing into the floor, grabbing the desk to stabilize herself before sitting down in panic. It's the best thing you've ever seen. Oh. She takes a minute to pat herself down as if lost before her dazed expression fixes itself onto you. Little you, so small, so foolish, you may have as well pushed her yourself with the way her face is getting redder and redder. What? What do you think you're doing? She tries to seem angry, but her voice cracks and she has to repeat it herself. She has to repeat herself. Oh, she's so embarrassed. Have you been here all night? I, well, you. You raise a brow, putting on a stern expression. I know... I know you know everything around here, but dear God, you have to take ca better care of yourself. Pulling an all-nighter is bad enough. Coming from me, the most frequent flyer of all-nighters airlines, but sleeping on your desk like that is a nightmare for your posture. You set your, jo you set your jaw. You're going home. To her credit, she doesn't immediately murder you for telling her what to do. Instead, she openly stares at you in complete and total ludicrousy before transitioning to her usual bitchy attitude. I will do no such thing. And who are you? You looked very interesting asleep on your desk with an extremely unprofessional air about you. Your shoulder straps are falling off, by the way. She snaps her head to her dress before the increasingly familiar expression of embarrassment appears on her face. What are you implying? Nothing, although you really ought to start packing your things up now if you want to get home before, rush, before money, morning rush hour. Even small towns have rush hour. It is sadly unavoidable. Miranda stares at you like you're deranged before slowly standing and grabbing her coat, glancing at you out of the corner of her eyes as if to check that you're real and not some figment of her sleep-deprived mind. Yeah, we're just actually her paralysis demon. Um, we're not actually real. We're, we're just, we've just been a paralysis demon the whole game. You catch her looking at you the fourth time and manage a cheery wave. 
I would appreciate it if you kept this between you and me. And the janitor. Miranda has clearly not considered this. It gives her momentum, however, and she gives you an imperious look as if she doesn't like look like she's being dragged to hell and back. Since you have the day off for no other reason than my grace. You open your mouth. No other reason. Her lack of rage makes you giggle and you swear you see her eyes go black for a moment before they're being before they're back to their usual piercing I'm reading your soul expression. Go ensure that my reputation isn't tainted with such nonsense. You stare at her. She sighs and rolls her eyes. Please. With a beam, you straighten your spine in agreement, happy to have the day off. She reaches for the coffee in your hand, and since it's disregarding her... So, and since disregarding her has gone grandly so far, you swing your hand back, therefore refusing her the caffeine. Nope. Sleep and I will ensure nobody hears about this upstanding headmistress falling asleep on her desk and drooling all over her papers. I do not drool. Since council requests for funds suggest otherwise. Besides, it was kind of cute. <laughs> Is Mother Miranda actually a bottom? <laughs> Is Am I actually mommy in this relationship? She's not actually dommy mommy? What a, what a twist that we're, we're weaving here. The world goes a sort of deathly silent as the words register in your ears and hers wide, her eyes widen. Just as you think you finally pushed your luck into the abyss, she stands straight and presses her lips into a thin line. Well, for future reference, don't ever talk to me like that again. Do you understand me? Okay, maybe, maybe we're getting it thrown back at us. You nod solemnly in response. Of course. You may call me Miranda in private. It's faster and therefore more efficient. She says the last part so fast you're worried that she might be embarrassed. How embarrassing. All right, Miranda. Be sure to actually rest. You obviously need it. You turn to pick up the scattered papers and completely miss what happens next. Thank you, little crow. Returning home after such a short day feels almost criminal. Now you have the entire day to just do things you want. You have no idea what to do with yourself. Hey, Rumi, what you doing back so soon? You shake off your previous annoyance. This time, it was about the dishwater and smile. Day off, semester miracle. Angie grins even more, which you think didn't think was possible, and you feel Danny approach from behind. What's going on? Asking our favorite roommate to have drinks with us. Oh, God. Uh... Uh, no, I think we should not be drunk. Psh, it wasn't that bad. You're about to open your mouth to argue that, yes, it had been that bad when Danny interjects. Besides, this time we won't make you do that. Come on. Oh, that. I've never had the option grayed out before. That's. This is definitely a different route. Okay, then. Woo! Sounds like fun. Finally got him to come again. This time we promise to keep it chill. Totally. All right, all right. Let's go. Recent past, the emperor. Your friends are liars. You wake up with what might be known as the worst hangover known to man, and all the, that's all their fault. How are you supposed to get to Miranda with this monster of a headache and not overreact to every rude comment she makes? Ugh. The ceiling is strange. Fully opening your eyes, you see that you're on the couch, Danny's on the table, and Angie's on the floor. All three of you are awake and none of you too happy about it. Even Angie seems to be suffering from a hangover of drastic proportions. I can't feel my legs. The room is spinning. I think I'm still drunk. I'm not surprised. Angie reaches for something blindly, hitting Danny in the face and throws it at you. Your eyes are closed, so you absolutely have no idea what she threw, but you do manage to grab it and throw it back. Going off the grunt that followed, you hit Danny and said, Whatever. What time is it? How the fuck am I supposed to know? Oh, we got a fuck in there. Danny whines. Shut up. There's a general agreement of absolute misery, but at some point, Danny must spare a glance at her watch because you hear the terrible news. You're two hours late. Fuck. Uh, we'll save here just in case. But I feel like work is the smart option here. Go to work. The only good news here is that she will kill me and therefore I will no longer have a hangover. 
After getting dressed very slowly, you drag yourself out to the courtyard on the way out, deciding if it was worth it to get, go get her coffee. Probably. The sun is atrociously bright and it's making your brain try and explode, but you power through. Extra good news, classes have been postponed because of outside circumstances, which just directly translates into they got attacked by birds the other day and are doing a terrible job of hiding the extremely public incident. What is that movie, Birdemic? Yeah, we're currently going through Birdemic. Wow, you're a little late. Hmm, the usual, please. Elena inspects you carefully. Oh my, you are quite hungover. I'm also two hours late. She stares at you openly. I suppose anything helps. She sets off to do her own thing because once again, she is somehow the only person who works here and yet she somehow goes to school. <laughs> you suspect this greatly, but she swears by it no matter how many times you question her on the matter. Psst. Shit. You startle and sheeplessly smile at her, and you're about to go your merry way, but she reaches out to you again. <laughs> God, Miranda is controlling every aspect of her life. You forgot something. There's another cup. Oh, I couldn't- I made two. You made two of Miranda's incredibly complex order, and I suppose- And I suppose I'm supposed to believe that was an accident. She raised her chin and you immediately cave because you need it so badly. It will be remembered, however. Reluctantly, you take the other cup and thank her. She smiles happily and wishes you well on your treacherous journey of forgiveness. Back in the greenery of the horrible sun, you drink your coffee as fast as possible and find yourself utterly horrified that the coffee is actually good. It's when you step in up to the building that things take an odd turn. Student council officers pass by the hallways, openly gaping at your audacity to show up late. You have an extremely uncomfortable interaction with Vizzy and Finch, who both stare at you until you've squeezed by. Eventually, your time for prayers comes to an end. You're faced with her door. You're so fucked. You think only seconds before opening the door to knock, and it's either made the whole thing worse or better. Come in. Well, she doesn't sound happy. With a deep breath, you swing the door open, but before you can even get a word of your planned apology, and she looks at you and goes, You look like shit. I know. You contemplate explaining your, your self-made situation, but she oddly doesn't look furious at your extreme tardiness. You offer the coffee from your right hand before switching it to your left. You know that she looks a little stuck on her words as she takes the coffee from you, but before you can do much about it. The emotion flicks away like switching channels on a TV. Well, you have a lot of catch to catch up on. Do tell. Why are you so tardy? She sits attentively like a parent who has caught you sneaking back in past care for you just and has just been waiting for you to come back just to get scolded half to death. With great reluctance, your shoulders sag and you sigh. If I must. Recounting the downright terrible night you've had before, which consisted of a lot of fireball shots, a few beers, way more vodka shots that are strictly healthy, and then a margarita that had been given less as a want, but more of a, I can't finish this, I can't finish this, here. You didn't drive, did you? There it is again, the peculiar expression that could have been confused with a genuine care for your safety, but you know better. You do, right? No, instead, three extremely vulnerable college girls and associates stumbled back. It's a miracle we're alive, actually. Miranda does an even strange- Miranda does get an even stranger look in her eyes at that. Did someone threaten you? Surprise hits you square in the chest, and you have to actively shove that part of you down that's calling this behavior attractive. Not that I can remember. To be fair, that isn't much after that margarita. Miranda unsurprisingly doesn't look too alleviated to hear that. Well, anyway, sorry I'm over two hours late. It comes out sour, and you're still confused as to why you aren't being eviscerated where you stand. But you will take a win where you can find one. Hmm. <clears throat> Go home. What? Am I being fired right now? Miranda manages to look offended at the question, which is certainly audacious considering her track record of bleeding staff. 
No, I'm telling you to go home for the day. Oh. Why? It kind of just slips out against your will, and you are kind of confused as to why she decided kindness for once in your miserable forced career as her assistant. Is it really so hard to believe that I don't want you here? That I don't want you in here half dead? This is a trap. Still, some deranged part of you twists her almost hurt expression. You say almost because you aren't sure if you're actually seeing it that. Is that hard to believe? I will say no. She'll start she startles at your answer as if she thought you'd answer cruelly. Well, you're not a hundred percent convinced of it. She hasn't actually murdered you the whole time. You've worked for her, which you consider to be a few point uh, be a point in her favor. I mean you're not nice by any means, and if I said that would be a lie so blatant you'd probably laugh at me. But if you really wanted me dead or something, I'm pretty sure I'd be dead already. I'd already be dead. For it takes so long, for it to take so long would be inconsistent with your aggressive need to be so efficient. She opens her mouth. Thanks for the resub, monk. Welcome in. She opens her mouth for a moment before closing it very slowly. Recently, you feel like you don't even know this woman. Yes, well. She coughs, shifting uncomfortably at how long the two of you have been talking am amicably. I am also tired. What you, what you eating, Monk? I might have mozzarella sticks and some french fries after this. You're quite correct on that assumption, although I don't go around killing people. Wings? Ooh, wings sound good. What kind of dip? Or sauce. The addition does not feel comforting, but at this point you just roll with it. Your head hurts too much to dissect why she felt the need to ensure that you knew she wasn't a serial killer. Ooh, buffalo wings sound really good. Go home, little crow. Little crow? Thankfully, your exhausted brain throws you a bone before it disintegrates. All right. And consider us even. Even in your exhausted state, you don't know, you need clarification on what she means. You wave your hand in acknowledgement, run into the door on your way out, and go back to your dorm. Sup. Do not sup me. This is all your fault. Uh, you get fired? Oddly, no. She just sent me home talking about how I look like death or something. Angie and Danny share a look. What? This isn't gonna help those rumors at all. You pause and evaluate whether you actually want to know before you pass out. With the utmost reluctance, you sit on the couch. What rumors? The next morning is shitty for entirely different reasons than before. Optimistically, you are not hungover. Pessimistically, everyone is convinced you're fucking Miranda, to sum it up. And now you're either meant to A. Ignore this and never tell Miranda about this B. Try and resolve it on your own Never tell Miranda about this C. Tell Miranda and deal with the rage that follows But also not have to get rid of the rumors on your own All of which, with your luck, will end with Miranda finding out And losing her shit on pretty much everyone You drag your ass out of bed to talk yourself up in the mirror Which is remarkably harder than it was when you were a child with hopes and dreams. Have fun at work! Shut up. You zip to the cafe quickly, before, barely even there for a few minutes before you're on your way to Miranda's office. However, you do notice that people are looking at you and turning to whisper to whoever is closest to them. Great. You're so focused on ignoring them, you end up crashing right into somebody else who thankfully catches the coffee before it can explode into a puddle of misery. Watch it. You manage a look at them, and you have to stifle the immediate instinct to ask them about whatever is going on with their hair. Sorry. You reach for the coffee, but for some reason they raise it away from you. You could probably get it if you tried, but you're extremely worried about what would happen should it simply decide it did not want to, its lid anymore. Why would the Wi-Fi want to work? You should walk slower. You're lucky it's my turn to walk. What does that even mean? It doesn't matter. Your coffee or Miranda's is returned to you. This cryptic figure inspects you with something akin to a predatory analysis and then just walks away. Right, what the fuck was that? It's a lot of fucks in this. But not a lot of fucking, if you know what I mean. Alright. Hydrate time, chat. Get, get your hydrate.
I know this game just completely dehydrates me. <laughs> I'm just not used to reading out loud. Even though this is, what, the eighth route? I'm still not used to it. It's the eighth route, but my throat turns into a drought. If only Ben were here. We gotta clip this for Ben. Tell him that I actually wrapped something. You inspect the coffee to ensure that it isn't messy, as Miranda tends to not at all approve of leaking coffee cups, which is one of the more understandable dislikes, before deciding you truly could not care anymore and finally walk inside. Wow, you hadn't realized how much shit-talking was going on until it had been explicitly pointed out to you. What do you fucking mean, you cunt? Your eyes widen as you take in the scene. Professor Dimitrisk, famous for holding- Famous for her difficult classes and somehow making everyone fall in love with her, is irritated but holding it in. Angie's aunt is for some reason also in the room and she's just- And she just looks like she'd rather be anywhere else but where she is. And Miranda looks more pissed than you've ever seen her. You're unsure if you should back out solely, run, or commit. All three turn to you sharply as you teeter in place as you realize you have interrupted something extremely important. You are dismissed. We will continue this another time, Alcina. Yikes. Professor Dimitris glares at you out of the doorway in like a shitty handed poker you fold under the weight of her gaze and skitter out of the way. Angie's aunt Donna, your mind supplies a little late, nods in acknowledgement before she practically sprints out of the room. Uh I apologize, I keep yawning, but I'm trying to mute it so it doesn't sound annoying. You glance at the door before closing it as Donna was in such a rush to escape she didn't bother on her way out. I'm sorry? Are you asking me or telling me? You react as you usually would. One, you clearly were not having the time of your life in that meeting. Two, I wasn't told I should watch out for people being in your office as you're usually not the social butterfly between the two of us. And three, I'm pretty sure Professor Dimitres was going to explode in her chair and Miss Beneviento was like seconds away from crying. Did you think I couldn't handle Alcina's rage? I got it, Monk, don't worry. Oh, that would have been fine. You would have imploded if Miss ben Beneviento started to cry simply because I think you're allergic to tears. I am not. There, now you don't have a pissy Miranda on your hands. Something about your face must show your success because Miranda suddenly looks properly surprised before getting that atrociously gentle expression. My, aren't you a bold one? I've never quite had such a secretary to yell at me repeatedly and argue with me. I like how you separated those like they aren't the same thing. Don't be difficult. If I wasn't difficult, I'd be crying in the file room because you said mean things to me. Again, besides, you need someone to show you what it's like. I'm not that difficult. You debate whether or not you should laugh or if she's serious. Your hesitation amuses her, apparently. Ooh. New era monk. Oh, please. I'm aware of my nature. With a grumble, you put the coffee down. It's colder since she chose to engage in conversation before in allowing you to place it down. But considering how friendly she's being, you're okay with the inevitable scolding. It doesn't come. After getting past whatever that could mean, you're, you idly do your job, something you've become incredibly familiar with to the point where you aren't even truly paying attention to what you're doing. That is when Miranda throws you a curveball. Any time? Shit. What? She rolls her eyes, but her posture is completely locked. What do you usually do when you don't have anything in particular to do? What do I do in my free time? Why must everything be so complicated? The f that phrasing alone. Yes, I've been told I should try to do other things than work. By whom? Your incredulous reaction was unstoppable. The audacity and fearlessness to outright say that to her? Not even... You were willing to mention it, and you've been on a streak of pretty much insulting her to her face. Never mind who. Uh. Uh, let's go with Reed. That sounds like the educational answer. 
I usually read. Miranda does this weird thing where the second she sits up a little straighter before seemingly dismissing herself and relaxing back to her chair. What the hell? What genres do you usually read? Uh, romance. Interesting. I'll keep that in mind. I mean, that's what kind of fan fiction I read. <laughs> she then does the most annoying thing possible and turns as if she never asked you a question at all. You consider pushing your impeccable luck, but decide to just finish your filing. Switching back to autopilot, you hum to yourself unconsciously as you make quick work of the stack. When you turn away, you almost jump as Miranda has given you her full attention. Yes? Where did you hear that? She always fucking catches your ass when you aren't paying attention. You focus as hard as possible and try to hum it again, but something stops you, like hitting an invisible wall. Your brain does not cooperate with you, leaving you to shrug. Not sure, it just came to me, I guess. Why? Nothing. It was pretty. Uh, what? No explanation is given, but an odd order is. Are you feeling alright? You haven't slept in your office again, have you? Miranda, who's insulted, scoffs. I'm fine. It's just you love your habits and you have never asked for a second cup of coffee. And now that I think about it, you never eat either. I do. I've just decided I'd like a second one today. You eye her warily as you slowly walk towards the door. Don't lock me out. Miranda sends you a glare of exasperation. You're so glad she likes you now and waves you away. Afternoon. Wait, what? You shrug a bewildered expression in place. She wants a second cup. Elena openly ga gapes. A second cup? But she never. I know. The poor barista looks so shaken that the entire process of paying and making and her making the damn drink twice takes twice as long as she moves in a daze. She's completely shattering the schedule here. My sense of time. Gone. You glance at the clock and take the cup, still bewildered. Maybe it's just today. No, that's worse, I think. You finish your conversation with Elena, who is also bewildered and frankly terrified, and you head back. You're in no- You're not in any rush. Certainly not the kind you're in in the morning, when you're simultaneously trying to race possible customers and time. Oh no, there's like no way they're still alive and not providing extra services. The headmistress is such a bitch. Oh, why? God, don't be so vulgar about it. I mean, totes. What if you walked the over? What if you walked the other way or just ran into traffic? The other people on the sidewalk park almost as if they want you to see who's taking about you, who's talking about you five feet away. Oh, it's the Rebecca's. Great. What else do you think they're? they get through. There has to be more privileges than just that. Do I look like I know? As long as I stay away from our Cassandra, I don't care who fucks who. Please. Stop being a baby. There's literally no way past them. They take up the whole sidewalk. Excuse me. All three whip around to stare at you. What perfect timing. Go on, ask. They're always being menaces. Like, they cannot just stop being menaces. She glares at the pink one who tries to glare back but just looks constipated. Ugh! So, are you, like, having a thing with the headmistress? No. Can I please get through? Oh, okay. The green one pulls her phone and literally tunes you out. The only one who's left is the red one, and she seems like the most, the least reasonable of them all. There is no need to lie. I won't tell anyone. I will tell everyone. The other two glance at the gr one in green, and she rolls her eyes, but ultimately ignores them. Fuck this. You push straight through, and the green one's phone clatters on the ground, which is likely the only reason you aren't intimidated. Immediately followed, as the three immediately jump to the conclusion that it must be shattered. Maybe get out the way next time, bitch. What could have possibly happened to make it take that long? You stare at her and once more go over your options. Everyone on campus thinks we're together. She drops her pen. What? After recounting what you've been told, Miranda's pacing the floor. 
After the initial, initial moments of blind rage, she'd transition into worry and anxiety over the way she was being perceived or something like that. You're not totally sure why she's mad other than the fact that people are talking about her behind her back. What could have possibly sparked this? What was that noise? Hello? I was told it was because I haven't quit yet or cried or- Okay! You shut your mouth almost immediately. Now is not the time to push her buttons. She continues to mutter to herself as she paces, shaking from either fury or synonym for fury. Suddenly she turns, her expression far more calm than before. Alright, little crow, I have a plan. Oh god. No offense. Offense taken. You throw your hands up in a faux defeat. Well? Oh, it's quite simple, really. We will ha simply have to spread our own s set of lies. Oh, goody. Thank you for the lurk. A reading in education. You tap your pen against the desk, eyes drooping as you force yourself to pay attention, or at least stay awake. Yeah, the yawning is included. Like I said, I don't know why I'm so tired. It's probably because it's pretty dark in here, and I'm pretty comfortable. So, that's probably why. I swear I had an energy drink today. It's just, I guess, worn off. As the professor continues to lecture, you feel yourself drooping further down onto the table until a traitorous little thought crosses your mind, just for a second. You allow your eyes to close gently, keeping them shut just for a few seconds before everything becomes blurry. If we could all focus... Fuck. Just one second had somehow turned into many seconds. Now you startle awake and look at Professor Dimitrescu guiltily as the rest of the class stares at you. Sorry, Professor. She gives you a look, but goes back to teaching. And, all th and this time, you sit straight and blink as little as you can. Class goes by very slowly, but you manage to stay awake the whole time, so you're su you suppose you're getting somewhere. As you slowly write down the few tidbits you can remember, you feel your brain cells dying as you struggle to focus, but eventually the lecture comes to a close. It felt incredibly long, but maybe there's some th that's because you've been skipping out on it or falling asleep. What? It's t tiring being Miranda's assistant, and more often than not, you want to live in your bed on the day days you have off. Okie dokie, monk. That you don't exactly have a natural affinity for this class, because... They were not lying when they said it was hard. You stay. You freeze in place instinctually knowing that it is on you. That is, it is you on her shit list. And understandably so. Like a scolded dog, you slowly walk towards her and she gives a displeased expression. Come with me to my office. Fuck. You shift awkwardly in the front of her- You shift awkwardly in front of her desk and she- irritably picks up a folder and lets it drop in front of you. Hesitantly, you reach out and flip it open, revealing a stack of essays written throughout the year. They're ordered chronologically, so the first few have high marks, or higher than the rest. Over time, you can see the grades slowly lower until you're just barely struggling through a passing grade. You can feel your face give a wince as the grade drops lower and lower until your most recent grade glares at you with a failing letter. Do you see what what I've called you here for? My shocking intelligence? She gives you a look, sneering at you with irri in your irritation, and you immediately shut the fuck up. You need remedial lessons now, or you won't pass the semester. She rolls her eyes. And for some reason, Head Mistress Miranda was very clear with me. That should you fall behind, I have to bring you back up to speed. This isn't the only class you're struggling with. Why would she do that? Does it look like I know? You draw your hands into your lap and purse your lips. What do I need to do? With a dramatic sigh, she goes on to basically inform you that event every day after class, half af after class, after her class, Jesus Christ, I cannot read. After her classes have finished, you were to report to her office for her to personally re-instruct you on the areas that you did particularly bad at. I mean, I am bad games, Jules. So I will be bad at the classes. 
And it comes with the shiny bargain of not being capable of being Miranda's assistant while you're being tutored. Who's going to stand in for me? Who knows? Perhaps little Stanley will come back for a week. Is that who it was before? I believe so. Now go. She shoes you away in irritation. I think that's the wrong form of shoes. Come back tomorrow. Oh. You throw your hands up. I knew I was tanking, but fuck. You get called in by the professor herself and told that I need to be tutored every day for the following weeks? Just, uh, don't fall for her, okay? You stop pacing and look at your red-headed roommate. What? It's just, people tend to do that, okay? And it's uncomfortable, and I'd honestly be really mad at you. Right, you forgot that scary woman is her mom. You will never understand how their family works genetically. I won't, don't worry. I'm more likely to cry than do that. People can do both. That has a very scary implication of a story that I don't want to hear right now. Good night. I have a bad feeling about tomorrow. Your head is in your hands as the professor takes a break outside. It has not been an easy session, to say the least. The door opens suddenly. You're greeted by your favorite bitchy headmistress. Oh. Come back. Professor Dimitres enters behind her and opens her mouth to likely point out just how badly you need to be tutored. It was much worse than you thought had thought, but Miranda waves her off imperiously. I will tutor them myself. I cannot bear this assistant any longer. It's been a day. And it's been awful. She cried twice and didn't even write down my instructions. But they're so obviously complicated. I know that. You know that. She doesn't. She turns to Professor Dimitrescu. I will tutor them for you. Give me what they need to learn. I cannot bear it another day. You scream eternally. There's no way she won't murder you faster than that professor will. But she hands the referenced material over anyway, wiping her hands of you. You're going to lose your temper with me. Miranda glances at you. I doubt it. Miranda's jaw is clenched as you sit next to her desk. Her fists are curled tightly into her palm and her eyes are closed in frustration. You signed up for this. Her eyes open and fixes you with an unimpressed look. How are you this behind? You shrug. She lets out a long sigh. Let's try this again. In what year did Art stop being awarded a medal in the Olympics? Ah. Uh... Let's see here. I'm just gonna guess... Uh, 1948. In 1948, I think it was Finland. Then in 1956, they stopped doing juried art competitions at the Summer Games. And then in 1958, they just lumped it together with the cultural program. What famous artist was accused of stealing the Mona Lisa? Um... Uh, I like that. Picasso. Picasso. He got busted with other sculptures stolen. Although I'm pretty sure he didn't steal those either, but it turned out it was some random guy who worked for the Louvre. Look at me knowing things. Totally. Let me get another sip. Alright. Miranda closes the book with a sigh. Irritated, but glad to be done. Is there anything else? You purse your lips. I might need help in my lab. Science. You nod. Okay. I can help with that. I can't do this. It's already dead. Has to make an inc incision. Do not fucking run from me. You whine. I'm squeamish. We are making up this fucking dissection whether you want to or not. There's a lot of, a lot of fucks and curse words in this route. You have missed a lab. You have missed a lab too many. And now you're forced with a poor little frog. Which is better than the pig the class had to do apparently. He's admittedly already dead, but it honestly sounds really gross to cut into him, but Miranda has you pinned. She takes your hand and directs you through the first cut, ignoring your disgusted noises. Both of you are pretending to not notice the professor staring at you with utter confusion. 
Miranda had waved him off when he offered to instruct you, citing her extensive scientific background, which had for some reason set, sent him practically running back to his desk so he could watch the two of you partake in your usual fucked up banter. I'd rather fail than do this, please. I will dissect you next if you do not do as you're told. Fine, God. She flinches against you at what you think is the loudness of your voice, so you lower it slightly for her. Whatever. Eventually she backs away a little bit to give you room when she thinks you won't go running the moment she can't stop you and unfortunately force yourself to finish the dissection. Was that so hard? You could have done this with the part earlier if you hadn't fought me so hard on it. Uh, we'll just make her feel better. Maybe you're right. Maybe, uh, I'm not saying you're right though. She takes off her gloves and walks over towards the professor who tries to make herself make himself small. She murmurs to him in a stern tone until he grabs a paper and hands it to her. And she walks back with it and places it on a clean desk. Lab report. You throw your head back in annoyance. Why? Do it or I swear. Okay. You reluctantly find a pencil and begin running, writing. For some reason, it has to be on paper and ignore her looming presence, making sure you actually do it. She sits with you, jaw locked in irritation until you finish. Give. You do as you're told and she reads it over before nodding. She puts it on your professor's desk with a lot more aggression than is strictly necessary. You're too smart to be doing this. But I'm so tired all the time. You whine at her and she clicks at, she clicks at you, making you get up reluctantly. Miranda glances around the two of you. Miranda glances around the two of you when she sees nobody near. She drops her shoulders slightly and you smile weakly. Sorry for the rumors and well, for pissing you off with the tutoring. She waves you off, looking irritated that you're trying to apologize for it. It's fine. Don't apologize for stupid things. Stupid. How ineloquent of you. She gives you a side eye before, but otherwise ignoring you. But really, thank you for the dissection thing more than anything. I'm pretty sure that you were able to, you were about to have a meltdown with me about art history, which is more comforting than it should be. Knowing the almost genius headmistress can't wrap her head around art history is actually extremely comforting and calming to you when you feel like maybe you should just fail out of this class. Also, Miranda's infuriated face is kind of funny, so it is a two-in-one. Yes, well, I suppose I don't see the importance in it, but you're welcome. I did it more for my sanity than to help you. Surely they weren't that bad. I think you just missed me. Well, we got her. I think we got her. You say it's smugly and not at all seriously, but Miranda goes a little pink and your jaw drops. No way. No, seriously? What does it matter? She walks faster and you chase after her, uncaring if anyone sees. It's so important to me that I know. Did you miss me? Did you? Leave it. Possibility is the tower. Yeah, we got Blushy Miranda. We, we made her blush a couple times. She's kind of cute when she blushes, actually. This is ridiculous and so middle school. And yet, stop making that face. What face? The one where you look like you think it's ridiculous. It is, but I don't have any other ideas, so... Miranda scowls at you for a moment before slightly lifting her mouth into a thin line. Do you need me to go over it again? No. You cough at your loud reaction. I, I mean, no, I'm good. Pardon me for not believing that for a second. You're excused. Her brow twitches, but she doesn't rise to the bait. She's been doing that lately and it bothers you so bad. Why is she being nice to you? All you've done is ex be extremely difficult about literally everything, although she started it. People are gawking as you leave her office, and you're all the more uncomfortable with it. It's none of their business. My, aren't my students quite bold these days, staring right at me as if I wouldn't notice. In comparison to how dis 
disgustingly fond she has sounded when she said you were bold. She's her usual flavor of pissy when she says it now. Although, going off her face, you would be more inclined to believe that she is most likely seeing how freaked out the student population would be if they overheard her getting pissed off. If she were really angry, she would be, more, she would be threatening someone's safety to a borderline illegal degree. Not that anybody would press charges against her, not even you would have the audacity to try and take her to court. The students nearby avert their gaze from the two of you, but everyone at a safe distance from you continues to stare. If we're going to get rid of these rumors, you can't respond to them. I'm aware. She says that, but you're half convinced that she's going to break someone's face. Actually, that would be extremely interesting to see. Would she succeed or would she just break her own hand? This is something you will have to think about at a later date. The walk is silent and so very tense. After the bomb you impulsively decided to drop a few days ago, Miranda has been quite adamant on ensuring nobody thought the two of you we're having a thing. You had brought up that technically it doesn't matter what they think since you two aren't sleeping together, but Miranda had just gotten even more upset at that before finally spitting out that she didn't want that kind of hit to her reputation. Which you then followed up with a, what the fuck is that supposed to mean? And then she had gotten this oddly panicked expression on her face before she repeated herself in much less offensive terms and started to ramble about ethics, which is hilarious, but whatever. Walking into the shop, you finally catch sight of the infamous cats that you were supposed to roam the cafe, but are always mysteriously hiding when you know sh when you show up. Alina always told you it was too early for them to Dane dine to show up. Welcome back. Her eyes dart over to Miranda for a moment before she goes back to looking at you. I'm happy to see that the cats are out and about. Be sure to keep a hold on anything important to you, or they will destroy it with little to no mercy. Cats. You idly wave your hand in the air. Yeah, it isn't called the Cat Cafe for nothing. I want to go to a cat cafe. I've been to it one once, but that's the only kind of like animal cafe I've been to. What did I get in my headphones? They're like, twisted on something. Hydration break. You turn and look at her before processing her extremely nervous expression before she wipes it from her face. Well, move it. You roll your eyes in an attempt to give her a side eye, but only manage a mildly strangled expression before turning back to Elena, who looks like she's almost laughing. <laughs> Caught in 4K. Now that you'd guess it, not that you guess it from her expression on her features, or exhaustion on her features. Again, does she sleep? Is she a vampire? Or does she have a secret that you must, yeah, you must do everything in your power to reveal? I wonder what it could be. You unconsciously squint at her and thought before Miranda actually just loses all patience with you and pushes you to the side, a sneer set in her features. I said to move. Hey, you stumble forwards and almost face plant into the extremely unpleasant and polished floor. Boy, you hear some sort of horrible squeaking sound and you're halted. Slowly you're brought upright by your savior who turns out to be Miranda, right? Well. What the fuck was the point of that, then? Are you all right? Right, what the fuck? Both of you turn towards the barista, who, for all intents and purposes, looks flabbergasted and frankly at a loss. You've never seen her look like that. Her mouth is downturned a whole millimeter. Pardon? I was talking to Clumsy over there. She wasn't. You startle at the ability to decipher her micro expressions before remembering you're interning for you're interning for the queen of micro expressions. Miranda inspects her before looking at you with something akin to utter defeat. Looks like I fell for you. What the fuck are you doing? Oh, that. She looks torn between rage, confusion, pity, and a secret fourth thing. That was bad. I know, I apologize. 
really bad. Like, what possessed you to say that? Miserable, you turn and face her. The devil, perhaps. Maybe he's finally found me for my terrible sin of liking peppermint schnapps. Oh, you really are a heathen, aren't you? I've never tried that since I don't really drink anything alcoholic. Her eyes cut to Miranda again. Why? You're not entirely sure. This has been a spectacular failure of a sting, but then again, you've always been spectacularly poor at following directions. Let's just order and leave. Uh, ooh. Do I want to fuck around and find out? I don't think that's the smartest thing to do, so I'm just going to order. What do you want? She looks at you like you're st she looks at you like you're stupid, and yeah, okay, that was kind of a dumb question to ask. Cheerily, Elena begins with the arduous task of making Miranda's coffee like a pro, and you're forced to sit down and suffer with Miranda while Miranda gives out the worst kind of vibe known to man. If she wasn't blackmailing you and so damn attractive, what? Order for clumsy, you scowl, but get up knowing full well Miranda isn't going to, to and bring it over. Shall I hold it for you, your majesty? He makes sure to say it quietly and everything to ensure no deaths or violence on her part while also maintaining your I will not let you bully me stance. I'm sure you can hold it for me. What? I was joking. Were you? Miranda. She gathers her coat and swivels. Headmistress Miranda. She continues out the door. This is childish. And you run after her. After an arguably pleasant walk where Miranda only insulted you halfish, it's too confusing to explain. You finally make it to the block of trees that make the courtyard. After pretty much immediately giving into the fact that you, right now you two are incapable of not being whatever weird thing is going on at the moment, why do you keep thinking about how attractive she is? Hasn't she always been? You had actually had a mildly non-antagonistic conversation. I suppose I simply just do not understand the logic behind it. Well, it's not meant to be logical. It's about, it's about love, after all. She gives you a side eye. I suppose you might know something about that, then. What, and you wouldn't? I'm a shit talker, but there's no way you haven't actually loved anybody. There's a moment where she looks to be in terrible pain, her entire face scrunching up in effort to control herself, and you feel like maybe, maybe she did love someone, and it did not end well. Once. It comes out hoarse, as if she's relieving, reliving something, and it's given her unimaginable grief. For once in your miserable relationship, you don't push her or make a joke. You simply wait for her to re resemble whatever it has broken in the moment and let her do it in her, in, at her own pace. Even so, if Romeo had just waited, things would have just been as planned. Welcome, welcome. Yes, but Juliet didn't tell him shit. What was he supposed to think? Perhaps a thought. You roll your eyes. The two of you had seen a Romeo, and, a poster for Romeo and Juliet. Welcome back, Mog. And you had idly commented that you'd like to see it when Miranda, always full of judgment, has said that she hates that story. Which, fair, this guy obsesses over this child, kills himself, and then she kills himself, kills herself. And it's this whole thing which, frankly, could have been avoided from the beginning if Shakespeare weren't such a dick about his tragedies. It wouldn't be a tragedy if things had turned out right, or if they had made the correct decision. The point wasn't that he couldn't bear to live a single moment without the love of his life, and so he didn't. And the second, and the one second of waiting would have been agony. Miranda doesn't even pause. I would wait centuries if that's what it took. Whoa. She has this intense look in her eye as if she stares into your soul or something. Instead of shrinking away from it, you have a half a mind to keep take a step closer. You sway a little too much with and you sway a little too much to your horror as she refuses to break eye contact. I, uh, words are quite literally failing you. That's actually quite romantic. Die in a hole. Is it? I was told I became single-minded when I care. She still won't look away from you and it's driving you up the wall. 
A lot of people find that attractive. There's a moment where you think she might kiss you, but instead she tilts her head and finally looks away for a moment. And it's like she can't breathe. You don't even- you didn't even notice you'd been holding your breath. Little crow. Hmm? When you love, do you love blindly? Oh boy. Not the food coma. Uh. Ch sure. Yes, I have a tendency to view the people I love like they're my whole world. It can be both rewarding and extremely devastating when they don't return the sentiment. She takes in a sharp breath and reaches up with her hand and almost touches your cheek before returning it to herself and turning back forward, breathing, heav breathing heavily. I see. Let me take another hydration break. I mean, my, I'm just thirsty. Oh god, this bitch Mia is finally here. Oh boy. The frankly unnatural fun time you were having is cut short by a mysterious woman in a leather jacket who is giving massive suspicious vibes who is just sitting on Miranda's desk. <laughs> Fucking Mia. God. This bitch, am I right, chat? Always ruining shit. She stares at you with abject interest and even familiarity. You see Miranda do a, a four reelsy double take at it before it's like her entire world ends in front of her eyes. Who's the new girl? Get off my desk. The woman shrugs and does as she's told. Well? Randa glares at her while the woman gives her an almost flat expression. I'm not even that new. New to us. <laughs> Hell for misogyny. Twitch doesn't like the word bitches. Thanks, Twitch. She always does. You're not wrong. Miranda looks like she might commit... She might commit her first real-life illegal action in front of you before thinking better of it. Mia, what do you want? I came to talk to you about student council stuff, but I'll come back later when the newbie isn't here. I'm not new. New enough. She has this permanently deranged expression set on her face when she winks at you like you're her friend or something. And you manage to look at Miranda while Mia exits, who frankly looks like she wants it to just end it wants to just end it all. Who the fuck was that? And can I never meet her again? Miranda gives this look of amicably, of amicable pity that tells you everything you need to know about the frequency of that happening to you. When you get back to your dorm, you fall asleep immediately that night, which is honestly a godsend if you've ever seen one, but you dream. Please, I can't lose you both. Voice you can't place. I'm sorry that I, I couldn't. There's a sputter, a spluttering. No, coughing, and it sounds terribly painful. I'm sorry I couldn't save her. I need you here. You- You can't leave me too, I- In your equivalent of an MP3 player dream state, you hear her wail before sobs burst through. The other voice doesn't answer. I love you. You sit up in bed faster than you ever have in your entire life. Faintly, your alarm rings and Danny calls you, calls for you to make it stop so she can go back to sleep. Where did that come from? You do your usual intern bit for a while until you become so wildly uncomfortable at the way Miranda is blatantly staring at you that you have to swivel. Please stop staring at me like that. Like what? Like you want to eat me? It's extremely distracting and I just forgot how the damn alphabet works. So like do paperwork or something. You pause. Pun not intended. Miranda wrinkles her nose at that innuendo, but otherwise looks even more intrigued by your statement. 
Uh, before I forget, student council elections are coming up, and I need your assistance. However, it's on the weekends. Sure. You agree before you can hear her out, which is very bad news for you, considering she had been staring at you like a predator today. And while incredibly attractive and distracting, it was doing bad things to your heart. Your heart, which you're begging to suspect, might have led you straight into a trap of crushing on the meanest woman on the planet. I mean, we've all been there, right? Who hasn't actually- who wasn't actually so mean once you disregarded the way she waged verbal war on everyone she met. Her cruelty hadn't even lasted that long, and even then, it was clear she was still being kind to you, in a way, since you hadn't shattered under it within that time frame. Every weekend, both days. I don't mind. Uh, nope, I don't- Weekends are for relaxing, madam. I do not work on weekends. There's arguably so much space between the two of you, but it feels like a millimeter and kilometer at the same time. Helping! You suddenly add the pressure of the situation causing you to cave into your weakness. The way it had sounded before, Branda for her part doesn't help at all by staring at you. Eventually you're dismissed and you don't have to behave like you're in a zoo, except when you lie down to sleep. You hesitate to close your eyes. But sleep finds you anyway. Everything is so jumbled. So many voices at once, imploring, desperate, rage-fueled, quiet, loving at the same, but distinctly impossible to recognize due to the sheer amount of overlap. Like 20 people are trying to talk into the mic at once and it can only pick up a scattered, utterly destroyed sentence. But one sticks out, and the one, and only because it's something you've heard before. I won't let you go, little crow. Not you. Not, not ever. I don't care how long it takes. I would wait centuries for you. Near future, the moon. Oh boy, we're failing classes again, are we? The next few weeks are hectic for, frankly, no reason, as nobody is opposing Bella Demetrisk, which means there's nothing that needs to be separated. And yet you find yourself running back and forth between offices because the student council clearly has too much going on internally. To you, it seems like the rest of the student council exists for fun, and Bella does everything herself, which is both impressive and incredibly alarming, but Miranda doesn't seem to be concerned over, your over her health, which might actually not be something you should be measuring with. These three look fine, but see here, she was supposed to sign both lines. Damn it, it was hard enough getting her to sit still the first time. Cassandra has never really been the type to face consequences anyway. I'm sure it was on the pr on purpose. Yeah, we haven't seen Cassandra, I forgot. We have not seen her all route. On top of that, there's some sort of interdepartmental scandal with a the theater troupe, which would be- Jesus Christ. Which would be fucking hilarious if you didn't have to deal with the war of complaints happening. Hey! Oh god. But worst of all, don't ignore me, is Mia. Ever since you had the absolutely deranged run-in with her, she has been following you around, utterly convinced the two of you are friends. You would mention it to Miranda, but honestly you think she might explode if something else is added to her plate, which will literally- which- Usual, while usually a form of entertainment would mean your dorm doom, good lord, I cannot read, would mean your doom in this scenario at the moment. So you let Mia follow you around like an annoyance and suffer in silence. Need any help? Do you know how to wrangle Cassandra into a room without breaking any laws? No, but I don't really care about the law. Red flag! Wee woo, red flag! Before you can stop her, she has disappeared into oblivion, and you watch her go with a mixture of horror and relief. This is literally the type of girl where you're like, I want a psycho bitch to ruin my life. Uh, I, I think she literally would. She literally will. She's going to do something terrible, but some petty part of you hopes Cassandra has to deal with her shenanigans instead of you. Almost like penance about this debacle you're being forced to deal with. As you pass by previously vacant rooms, you hear an assortment of complaints. 
That's absolute bullshit. I don't care who said that. Cass wouldn't do that. She's a lot of things, but not that. She's practically a tyrant in the theater. No, I'm not crying. It's just my allergies. Why am I even here? What do you mean a character reference? Has she committed a crime? The only thing I've ever seen her do is drag about 14 different girls into my shop in under a week. Oh, you've never seen her out of her natural habitat before. I just want this to be over with. It's been like this for the last three days, and you have to agree with Jasmine. You want this to be over, too. Walking down the hallway to your left, you find yourself in a different kind of chaos. A mixture of pointless campaigning and winter ball planning is occurring, and you almost turn back around into that drama that Cassandra has created. Almost. What have I said? Don't pick locks unless you say I can. Don't let me catch you again. Mia rolls her eyes when Miranda turns to bark orders at some lost freshman soul from brightening away. From before brightening and walking away like an absolute maniac. Miranda turns sharply, thunder in her eyes before she spots you. Then she does the weirdest thing when she glances between me and you and shit. Sorry, Cassandra locked herself in a room and started wailing about her play or something. And then headmistress Miranda caught me picking her lock. Mia looks at you expectantly and you realize you're supposed to accept her apology. Oh, uh, it's fine. I wasn't serious about it anyway. Uh, well, maybe next time. Next time what? Nothing. And then she walks away. And you're left to watch in terror. For someone who speaks so sweetly, she is pretty fucking terrifying. I wasn't aware the two of you were acquaintances. I wasn't either. Bro. You haven't been out with us in forever. Danielle is beyond trash, but while well, you can't really say that you aren't far off yourself. Been a little busy with the... You make a vague gesture with your hand like that's supposed to explain everything, and drunk Daniela seemingly understands perfectly and nods solemnly. Do you know what's gr a great idea? Both you and Daniela turn towards the smaller woman. It's bound to be a terrible idea. We should take that guy's keys. Drunken Angie either takes a form, takes a turn for more party or criminal activities. Usually you're along with the ride, but somehow your addled brain cobbles together enough to, to sense to say, That doesn't sound like a good idea. Angie pouts at you, which you take to mean that she doesn't- she won't do it, since she prefers to have everyone involved in her schemes. Danielle closes her eyes and frowns for a moment before nodding seriously. Next time, maybe. Or never. You turn in the bar stool, careful not to tip and fall, and inspect the room, narrowing your eyes when it gets hazy like it's going to help. Someone sits next to you, and both Daniela and Angie let out a cheer, and it makes and it makes you turn and face them. Hello, you look trashed. <laughs> Imagine just going up to someone saying you look trashed. Imagine the audacity. Before you can get a word in, the bartender arrives with four drinks and glances at Cinder like she's a ticking time bomb. Thank you. You'll get that raise. She then takes out a book and scribbles it in, using the cover to shield from view before slamming it closed and putting it somewhere where it can't be seen. Where the fuck does she keep that thing? Drinks for everyone. The screwdriver is yours. Uh, all I know about a screwdriver is that it has a lot of alcohol, I think. Right? Maybe? Perhaps? Cocktail? Thing? I don't know. They tilt their head towards you in acknowledgement. Seems like you need a break more than anyone else here. I only fell off twice. Danielle and Angie pick up their respective drinks. A frozen margarita for Angie and a dose double X for Daniela, who has your utmost respect considering her drink choice. Those are your cutoff drinks, by the way. They stare at you while you take a drink it's almost it almost makes you uncomfortable before they decide they're bored and slam down two shots of vodka two shots of vodka like it's water and nod to you someone will come if you call 
She puts, pulls out her book and pen, already scribbling as she walks, and disappears into the crowd. What a weird woman. With free drinks! Our last drinks. You shrug and continue at, at a semi-leisurely pace, ignoring the buzzing feeling in the back of your skull. When the three of you finally re leave, you realize you've been, you've been left behind as Angie and Danielle are nowhere to be found, and you squeeze out of the crowd and feel more dizzy than you were inside. Originally, you think that perhaps you had taken on more than you could handle alcohol-wise, but then you feel more like the room is going black and drowsy than, than giggly and exhausting. Oh god, our vision. Help! You manage to take a few steps away from the entrance before crumbling to your knees with the sickening realization that you have been drugged at some point in the night. A roofie more than likely. However, you can't quite identify who would have done it. Cinder is strange, but Danny and Angie hadn't been affected, and you don't grasp how she could have made the bartender do it, unless it was the bartender. You can't focus on it, on it much longer and sink until your back is against the wall and you're breathing heavily. In a panic attack, you reach for your phone and mistakenly drop it before managing to pick it back up with blurry eyes. You can't stay out like this, and Danielle and Angie are in no state to keep you safe even if they were with you at the moment. Someone will come if you call. But who? Slowly you manage to get your contacts before your vision is starting to flicker and you press on your most recent call. There's a click before you realize who you've called in a panic. Nothing to lose. Yes. I Tears come to your eyes as both embarrassment and fear take over. Do you remember what you told me about that night? Me and my roommates walked home alone and drunk. A day after she had learned that, she pulled you aside and told you that if you absolutely 100% needed it, she would find someone to give you a ride home. And she would definitely lord it over your head, but she would help you. You don't like the slow text? What's wrong with it? I do. She sounds worried. I need help. I had too much to drink. And you get quiet for a moment before giving in. I think someone drugged my drink. I can't stand or see all that. Well, I'm on my way. For a moment, you think she's going to hang up, and you feel yourself get tense at the thought of being alone for so long, but instead you hear her get ready and realize, with a sinking feeling, that she had been asleep. Well, last you had checked, it had been about 1am, so it's pretty, actually pretty fair of an average person. I'm sorry for waking you. You croak it out with a distinctly miserable tone of your voice and find yourself shocked when Miranda responds. Don't be. Then as she makes her way to you, assumingly after you had vaguely described where the bar was, she makes idle chatter to let you know that she's still there, and so you have something to respond to to let her know that you haven't died or something. Faintly you hear people pass you by, but when you open your eyes to your blotchy vision, you see someone approaching you, who is distinctly not a short blonde woman looking to kill. You do your best to rise from the wall, but quickly find yourself overwhelmed and fall back down, making a pain noise as you do. Thankfully, you hear a car screech to a stop and if, as if it had been speeding to get there. It gathers everyone's attention around you, including you. Miranda steps out, slightly less put together than usual, but you tr think to cry when she makes eye contact with you. Or you think she does, and quickly walks over, intercepting the person intending or on either helping or cornering you. Here. She speaks to you softly, and lifts you as best she can, and helps you stumble into a heavily supported standing position. Don't feel good. Miranda nods in support, and makes you want to curl into her and let her keep everyone else away. She manages to get her passenger door open and gently leads you to sit down inside of it before going over to the driver's side and leaving the same way she came, fast. Not the Vaseline still on the camera. <sighs> now that you're in a perceived safe place, you immediately start crying and Miranda makes this awful noise of fear at it. Oh, Please don't cry. I'm sorry. So sorry. I didn't mean to. Just didn't know who else to call. Your roommate? You shake your head. 
Couldn't find them when we got out, and then I couldn't move anymore. Terror hits you. What if they were drugged too and you left them? Miranda suddenly pulls over and gently pries your phone out of your hand before shaking her head. Your roommates are fine, looking for you right now, but fine other than the extreme amounts of alcohol ingested. She seemingly types out a response at this and you blink several times to try and clear your vision on instinct before giving up and letting your head fall back against the head of the chair. You close your eyes because honestly you can't even really tell where up and down are anymore before almost retching at the motion sickness due to it. Right, so no giving into the drug until you're back at your dorm. You turn when Miranda peels out of the parking lot. She pulled over and like a bat out of hell her hands are white on the steering wheel and it makes you want to reach over and gently pry them away in order to both save her hands and the steering wheel instead you make this pathetic noise of intent before whining you're all right i've got you her voice soothes you just enough to get you to stop making panicked and scared noises but not enough to stop your eyes from flashing around to take in your environment her car, while by no means poor quality, isn't as pretentious as you'd think. Most people in this town don't even really invest in cars. There are enough, there are enough roads to be maintained, but not much more. Your vision continues to darken, but unlike how you thought you'd pass out, it's more like you're slowly falling asleep, but really painfully. By the time you feel the car stop, you can barely tell where up and down are, but somehow you do manage to ask, How did you know where I live? You can't really see it, but the silence that ensues tells you what a dumb question somehow. You live on my property as a student. Of course I know where your dorm is. She stops for some reason, as if startled. I, I didn't take you there, though. Perhaps that would have been the correct thing to do. Is, what, is that what I did last- Oh, God. Let me read that again. Perhaps that would have been the correct thing to do. Is that what I did last time? She talks like it didn't occur to her to do that, but if she didn't take you back to your dorm, where are you now? And what does she mean by last time? It doesn't matter. All that matters is that you're safe now, and I will be sure to take care of you properly. I did it for you, not me. Ah, uh, you must have said it out loud, but before you can manage anything else, you black out. You're home. When you open your eyes, you almost think you're in Miranda's office somehow. But you sit up, and it looks like you are. Oh, you're awake. How do you feel? Terrible. You take that moment to throw up in your mouth a little and force yourself to swallow it back instead of letting it out on the no-doubt expensive carpet. Where am I? My home. You look around just to make sure. Did the home come before the office or the office before the home? Pardon? You gesture weakly to the room. This looks just like your office. Miranda, for her part, actually gets redder at that mention. It's almost enough to make you laugh. But your stomach hurts so bad. A bad mixture of too much alcohol and being drugged has no doubt left you sick. Where's your bathroom or trash can? Before Miranda can answer, you spot a small little desk trash can. A desk. She has so many of them. And for what? And you roll off whatever soft thing you're laying on to run to it and rush into it violently. There's a distinct sound of disgust before, hesitantly, Miranda gently rubs your back and gathers anything loose so that they don't become, well, covered in vomit. Embarrassment's begins to cloud your mind and you find it more difficult to allow yourself to get whatever is in your stomach out which is which only makes it more painful let it out you will feel better despite the way your mind agrees you still find yourself dry heaving a few times before you can manage to do so when you're finally done miranda guides you back to where you were lying which was a whole entire bed more than you thought she owned why do you have a desk in the guest bedroom? Ah, oh, we're fine. Your voice is scratchy from being sick, but truly, what the hell? This is my room. What? I slept in your bed? Yes, I don't have a guest bedroom. There's no surprise there, honestly. That's on you. Then, where do you? Where did you sleep? 
Miranda gives you a look. I didn't. By now, she's managed to get you back on into bed, her bed, and your sickness adult, your sick adult brain does not think, only does. Reach out mindlessly and yank her down onto the bed with you, ignoring the utterly alarmed and unnatural rattle she lets out. Sleep. Your eyes are already closed when she makes a strangled noise, so you peek out to make sure she isn't hurt. She'll be mortified about this later. Miranda looks at you with utter alarm and fear, and for once, you wish you were aware so that you can make fun of her for it, or maybe even coo at her about it, but instead you do another stupid thing and wrap both your arms around her to ensure she stays put. Sleep. I. Alright, don't throw up on me. Okay. Happy with her acceptance, you let go of her so she can readjust herself and somehow you end up curled into her. When you wake up again, you do in fact make a squeak when you simultaneously remember and realize where you are. It's enough to make it it's enough of a noise that Miranda, who's fucking cuddling you, stirs and makes a similar noise in confusion either at your position or the sudden noise. Are you going to be sick again? It's almost funny how ready she is to get out of the way, but you behave similarly when faced with the threat of being thrown up too. A thrown up on. No, I don't think so. She relaxes against you. The feelings you have you have been so strongly fighting against are not being squashed down successfully at the moment and it's making you want to close your eyes again and maybe just stay there for a while she's so very familiar <laughs> she's surprisingly really sweet I'm I did not expect this route to go down this way why are you so much nicer to me you don't even realize you've asked something until Miranda pries herself away and looks at you curiously as if genuinely confused. Why wouldn't I be, little crow? Dunno, people act like you're a monster. At best, you're a bitch to me. But you've been so nice to me lately. It's confusing my heart. Oh, you wouldn't say I'm a monster? No. It comes out further than intended, like an indisputable fact to you. Miranda inspects you closely, and your traitorous little shit of a heart only beats faster for it despite how tired you are. Well, I... She hesitates for a moment, as if she's been vulnerable too long. Please? Your fragile voice must do something to convince her, because she shifts slightly closer. Why would I be cruel to you when it feels like you're the only person who understands? Understands what? Miranda hums gently and brushes a loose strand of hair out of your face. We can talk about it later when you aren't in poor health. You hum in agreement, already feeling drowsy again in the way you feel when you've slept for too long and you are no longer capable of functioning. You feel your eyes flutter shut and only manage a small good night before going right back to sleep. Perfect. Empty, no dream sleep. Don't run too far. Although you can't really see anything, you can somehow tell that you're moving forward and someone is holding onto your hand. It's not like being dragged from what you can tell. It's gentle and companionable. Little Crow, what has you so quiet? Just thinking. You can only feel your heart rate rise rapidly once you realize it's your voice talking. Just how down bad are you? Having regular dreams about your boss and seemingly being together? About... Miranda's voice is far less antagonistic than usual. Feels like she's almost a normal person, just taking a walk with no intentions of making anybody cry. In fact, the way it is now, it's downright plainful, even soft-spoken. You, of course. Is that so? Always. She makes a small sound, a gasp before the faint pressure letting you know she had been holding your hand disappears with a yank. What did I just say? You wake, breathing hard for some reason. You realize Miranda isn't in bed with you anymore. You take deep breaths to calm yourself before sliding out of bed to search for her and maybe solidify that your dream was just that, a dream. You would have felt so awfully real. Reason I'm not dealing with this very second is that I am busy and it worked out in my favor. Do you understand? There's noise that's faint enough to tell that you're that she's on call. They don't sound very apologetic. 
Good. Do not test me again. She hangs up and sighs in frustration. You wait a beat before turning the corner. You're up. How do you feel? Better now. She nods, but still gets up to inspect you. Herself, control freak. Hmm, yes, you do seem to be in better shape than yesterday. Still, you should rest again. Part of you wants to ask her what her call was about, but you're more concerned about your health at the moment. Right. You glance down at yourself, notably in clothes that do not belong to you. Could you tell me where my, uh, clothes are? Oh, now you're shy. You can feel the heat sweep down your clavicle at the con at the comment. Oh, God. Not the edgy music. I wasn't feeling good. Out of my mind, you could say. Even out of control. She hums. Under nor normal circumstances, I would have not dragged you down like that. Oh, Jason! WWE Dad Rock! So you do remember then. Fucking hell. Just, oh my god, why are you fucking with me right now? Please direct me to my clothes so I can give these back. Why do you need to do that? She tilts her head at you, and once you're, and you're once again reminded of a bird. Maybe she liked them so much, she started to act like one. Where is her bird in this route? It's, I feel like her bird is only in the one route. Where is her bird? To go back to my dorm, I wouldn't assume that I'd stay here again. Miranda gets agitated for a moment before she shakes her head firmly. I think it would be smarter to rest here where there's no distractions. You're a distraction. Why? I mean it, it wasn't a lie, but why? Oh. Before you can identify what's going on, she moves on. I just know how convincing your roommates can be and don't want to... Just start adding more Disney music to even it out. Have they asked about, like, Asta La Vista? Or the other camp rock songs you've added on there? Uh, she then falters as if she's running out of steam. Her eyes do a sharp flash to the left before returning to you. Huh. Not the- not the jewels. Oh, fuck. I didn't mean to do that. Not the creation of the playlist. See, this is this is why me and Jason have the best playlist. There are zero Camp Rock songs on there. <laughs> Monk's gonna infiltrate up our playlist and add all the Flo Millie, uh, Melanie Martinez, and Disney. <laughs> Oh my god. I would prefer if you stayed. You slowly blink at her in a mixture of exhaustion and confusion as you register her words. You want me to stay? God. Yeah, discovering Monk's other favorite rap artists. Yes. Well, you were wildly unprepared for her to say that to you. So now, what are you supposed to say? No, as if. Well, alright. I guess if you really think it, it's would be better. I'll stay for another night. Yes, good. Hmm. She's so awkward. I need to add things to our animazement playlist. We gotta get Jason back into animazement so we can make it a, a thousand song playlist. Oh, do you need anything? I don't keep a lot here because you chronically overwork and live in your office so therefore keep everything there instead of here. More or less. You make a sound of amusement at her called out expression before thinking for a moment. So what food do you have on here? Oh, I'm so hungry. Don't talk about food. Miranda makes an ex embarrassed expression. Right, okay. She more or less spends the day working on something. She's refusing to show you or fussing over you to a point where if you had been anyone else, you would have punched them. She gets the warning shot of, You're giving me claustrophobia. Before she backs off slightly more. She doesn't have any food on hand, but she does have a whole eight movies and possibly the oldest TV you've ever seen in your life. You cheer immediately when you see she has the Devil Wears Prada, which prompts her to choose it immediately, much to your delight. Don't you like that movie, Monk? I have never seen it. You had managed to convince her that she would watch one with you instead of doing her job or whatever boring 
And so she sat vaguely, unwillingly next to you while prattling on during the movie. Devil Wears Prada. As you watch Hathaway and Streep interact on screen, you, feel, you can feel Miranda turn towards you. You turn to face her and find her with a furrow in her brow. For a moment... <laughs> oh god, that, that's the next thing Monk's gonna make me watch with her. For a moment you think she is finally going to ask you about the way you have had giggled way you had giggled at the name twin thing but instead she gets very close little crow yes comes out as a squeak which is frankly embarrassing but you force yourself to tune back into her i am aware that people write stories that are untrue to the media who what where when why how why is she talking about fan fiction <laughs> hey, hey, hey fan fiction is the best thing I just see on my weather thing, seven inches of snow on Saturday. Okay, then. I'm definitely going to have to go to the store tomorrow to get some food. Maybe Resident Evil All Day Stream Part 2. Am I wrong to assume that? She glances at the screen and your brain cells connect a few dots for you. No, people do for them. Do you? She's floundering. You can't help but watch as Miranda fails to grasp what she's trying to ask, but you decide to take a gamble. No, it doesn't. It makes me uncomfortable, that is. Would you be willing to date an older woman? Oh, not not driving through that. That's when you call work and you're like, yeah, no. Uh, you gonna pave my driveway for me? You gonna pave? Pave? That's how- that's how tired I feel. Shovel. Uh, plow. Plow! That's the word I was looking for. Oh my god. <laughs> Welcome to the stream. I'm Juby. I don't know how to say words. <laughs> I'm not even that North, Monk. I am t the most mid-Atlantic state. We are the mid-Atlantic state. And knowing- knowing Maryland, it says seven inches of snow, but we're probably gonna get like three- if that. Like, the weather changes here so often. Uh, would I date an older woman? Uh, I mean, personally, depends. Oh, New York? Nah, that's that's gonna be a lot of snow. I know New York, uh, gets a ton of snow. I've never been to New York. I've wanted to go to New York. For, at least, like, once for funsies. But, uh, I know New York gets snow. Uh, personally, I would not date someone so much older, but I'm going to assume the correct answer here is yes, because, you know, Miranda's kind of old. Not old, old, but... Ah, Nevada. I've been... Now, I've been in Nevada. I've been to Vegas. And the one time I went to Vegas, it rained. So, that's my luck. Uh, we're going to say yes. So I'm pretty sure that's the answer she's looking for. Oh. Her breath hitches audibly and you find yourself continuing to stare at her while she reacts to your answer. Sometimes she's so translucent about her intentions. When the movie ends, you yawn. Somehow you still haven't gotten enough sleep and Miranda takes the moment to shepherd you into bed again. And you manage to roll over and look at her before she leaves. Yeehaw. Promise to sleep? Miranda pauses and turns to you. I promise. What were you thinking? Another small figure responds quietly, hushed to avoid any spreading of news. Mother sits furious as she stares them down before sneering. I'll skin you if you try anything like that again. Do you understand me? She is alright, isn't she? Mother turns, bird-like eyes peering through her mask, predatory and ready to kill at a moment's notice. She better be. There's a wave of murmuring through the gathered crowd, some shocked, others worried. She's fine, now shut up. Yes, leave, all of you. I must return before morning. Power, the chariot. Chariot, is that Morgana's? I know Silver Chariot is uh, Polnaroff's. Uh, I'm trying to think of the... Chariot is Morgana's in Persona 5, right? Uh, I'm 70% on that.
The return to your dorm room was chaotic at best. Miranda had almost dragged her feet leaving her home to take you back and you had oddly spent almost half the drive egging her on in order to ensure your safe return. Not that you were unsafe, but you did have the feeling that if you stayed another day, she was unlikely to let you go back. I... I'll be fine. You'll see me at work in like 20 minutes minimum. She stares at you and you find yourself rolling your eyes. I promise. Finally, with repeated begging, she leaves. Then the real madhouse begins. Oh my god. You shriek in surprise loud enough that whoever is next door slams their hand on the shared wall and annoys as their way of telling you to shut the fuck up. On instinct, you slam your hand on the wall and return. You're back and you're safe. Uh, I said that I was. Yeah, but that was when you were with the headmistress. And you know about that cult thing that's been going on around a campus. What if that creepy fuckers had gotten you and were just pretending to be? I'm freaking myself out. You frown. I was safe with her. Look, we were just really worried, all right? We felt terrible when we realized we had lost you in the crowd. And then it was even worse when we realized you had to call her to come help you. You almost feel guilty before you remember to be mad. I understand you were worried, but I was scared and I knew she'd pick up. You shift. I was drugged and I needed help that very second and I couldn't find you. I was worried that you'd be drugged- you'd been drugged too. Daniela takes a step forward. But you're alright. Her teary eyes sweep the anger right out of you. Yes, I'm alright, nothing happened, but please, if we go out again, no splitting up no matter what. Both of them nod in agreement and you cautiously hug Daniela, who's known to go a little crazy over- over a hug and Angie happily adds herself into it. Letting out your breath, you wince. I still have to go to work. What? It admittedly takes longer than 20 minutes for you to pry yourself from your roommates, who had quite literally dropped and latched onto your legs like small children. Go to the cafe and walk all the way back. 20 minutes. You raise your hands and surrender immediately. How was I meant to anticipate everyone wanting to talk to me for like 10 minutes each? So confident. 20 minutes. I'm here now, aren't I? With coffee, too? She shakes her head playfully, repeating the time frame again. Technically, I said minimum. You grumble it as you place the coffee down. When you swivel, you find yourself smiling at her. You feel her glare at you over the choice of the word choice. Glancing over your desk, you manage about ten seconds before double-taking and looking at it closer. It's bigger and more desk-like than before. Miranda, she hums. When did you manage to get this in here? A magician never tells their secrets. I wasn't aware you were a magician. Aren't they tacky? Hey! Zatanna is one of the best music musicians. Magicians ever. Best superhero. Uh, totally didn't make my entire online personality about her. <laughs> about her. Monk, we're not, we're not, we're not judging me. As quick as it ha had appeared, her playfulness is washed away with a faux scowl. I am not tacky. You said it, not me. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Without thinking, she grabs a pen and throws it at you, and you find yourself squeaking in surprise and dropping it to avoid it. The day is not hard. You find yourself waiting outside for a moment, realizing that Miranda was actually packing up when you had left on autopilot. Just when you think you were imagining it, the door swings open and Miranda freezes mid-step when she sees you. Oh, I thought you had left. I did, but I thought I'd wait for you and all that. Maybe walk you to your car? It's kind of dark out. Yeah, it's, it's kind of dark out! Uh, and I'm filled with sudden bravery. Her mouth quirks in amusement, but she doesn't shoo you away. Oddly enough, you didn't think she would. The walk is quiet, mostly, until Miranda decides to break it. Little crow, what has you so quiet? It hits you square in the chest, that dream. Just thinking. Miranda hesitates on her next step, flashing a glance at you with spark something akin to recognition in her eyes. About. Something possesses you in the moment to turn to her and reply. You. 
If you didn't know better, you'd say her pupils were blown. But you do. You do. But when Miranda takes a strangled breath of air, something tells you that you don't. Is that so? Hello? You find yourself getting a little dizzy from the deja vu from something that never happened. This hasn't happened before, right? Always. Suddenly you're hit with a headache and your head and hand goes up to your head and you blink a few times. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know what came over me. Suddenly you feel, have felt like you were in the forest on a sunny day with Miranda and... 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 Don't push. Her hands are on your, sh on your shoulders and you look at her dazed. What does this mean? What does she mean? Trust me, don't push. It will come to you. She checks you over gently before taking a step back. You haven't even realized you reached her car. Good night, little crow. It only occurs to you when she's pulling away. It already has come to me. You drag yourself through the door and find it empty. A note that reads, out for groceries, alcohol, BYOB, night boys. The original note is notably in Daniela's shockingly neat handwriting when she wants it to be. However, Angie's haphazard handwriting is scribbled all over it. Shaking your head with a chuckle when you get ready for bed, lying in your own comforter is refreshing, yet oddly welcome. I say welcome. Oh, oddly unwelcome. Hmm. Seems like something you don't want to dissect or look into at all. You close your eyes, already dreaming, dreading whatever your mind will come up with next, and fall into slumber. I have no idea where she went. For some reason, you were a mysterious third party to your own dream, watching yourself hiss behind you. She couldn't have gone so. F she couldn't have gone far. She, has got your stamina. Other you turns around with no amusement in their eyes. I am not that weak. Tell that to you last week, wheezing on the driveway after you ran a mile, a singular mile. It felt like a long mile to me. Case in point. She prods other you in the shoulder before disappearing between the shelves to look for whoever the two of you are chasing. Sweetheart, you're scaring us. Me, really. Your mother will murder me if you disappeared under my watch, my blood on your hands. Oh, fine. You're no fun. What? Who? Don't tell me you can't. Just do it. You have no idea where you are now. But other you hovers behind a Miranda that is far more familiar than you before. My avian goddess. Miranda reaches behind herself and pushes other you away with a huff, the anger seemingly leaving her as you let out a small laugh at the action. It has to work. And it will, but first we will have to discuss the townsfolk. It gets blurry for several seconds, even a few minutes before everything clears up back into 4K! I won't let them. Go get them. Other you hesitates. Which? All of them. Right, I'm not sure how to locate several of them, but I'm sure I can get the funny one in the hat. They have business cards. What kind of audacity? Never mind. And the bird? It's not hard to miss. Thank you, little crow. And when you find them, all of them, tell them why I consider, why I called. Consider a return. Other you nods and kisses her temple gently before turning and leaving the room. You groggily exit the, your room, pausing in consideration at the new sticky note greeting you. I'm out getting groceries for real this time. Angie's at her aunt's. She got a little sick. You take a moment to drink your shitty homebrewed coffee and try to focus on your dream. You know it's been vivid. It had been vivid in the moment, but when you try to focus, it escapes your grip. Eventually, you get frustrated enough that you stop, remembering how Miranda had told you to stop pushing. You check the clock. Ugh. The walk is long and boring, but Elena greets you with her usual amount of excitement. Welcome, welcome. Tell me everything. Come around the corner. Or the counter. You blink in surprise when she gestures for you to actually do so. I'm so fucking serious. Come over here right now. How dare you make me hear about this from Cassandra, of all people. Follow me while I make it and tell me everything. You look around, alarmed, but nobody's in the cafe other than you, so that might explain her casualness. You walk around the counter and quickly find yourself being forced into doing whatever she wants and spill your guts about everything. What kind of romantic dra dramedy are you in? No clue. She knows the lack of correction sticks to it like glue. Do you? Hmm? 
Do you like her? Is there something between you? Do you want there to be something between you? You flush, but answer, but answer anyway. Yes, no, well, kind of no, and unfortunately yes. Yes? She turns sharply from where she's messing around with the flavoring and grabs your shoulders. Do you promise to fill me in on every time I see you? Y yes? How down bad are you? Very. Hmm, this could work. She's scaring the absolute shit out of you right now. What the fuck? Someone help. Here's her coffee. We'll talk tomorrow. She then pushes you out from behind the counter and even goes as far as to push you out the door before finally allowing you to walk on your own. Alright. Uh, I'm going to go to the bathroom real quick. So, BRB chat. so bad at this. Let me have a shot. Look at these losers. <laughs> oh my god. He did it. He got two. help each other. Yeah, we definitely need to help each other. We need to help you not walk into that wall. When do you think that mural was made anyway? Wait, what? And who do you think made it? I, well... <laughs> he doesn't have any answers. Wait. Why is it that you were able to meet those Illumina Pokemon? Because I am the Illumina Pokemon. That is the twist all along. You all wild, wild family. Yeah, welcome in Legend of Zelda. The only Zelda game I've played is some of Breath of the Wild, but I definitely need to play more of it. Hope you had a good time playing Zelda. Your yeah, our, our half uncle Amogus in real life. Thank you, Ben. Perfect clar clar clarification. Uh, yes, Amogus. Amogus sus. I'm also adding a new sub benefit. Um, if you oh, right oh, don't we have things to take to what's his name?
get out of my way. No, the fucking thing's right there. No, 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 no. Oh, I'm in pain. That, that, that sucks. Well, actually, it did because I got a hundred copper out of it. Not you saying the BRB screen busting out old clips, oh no. <laughs> Kinda worried would it bust out. Um. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Those are usually the more cursed ones. YouTube chat back up. Okay. You stand blankly for a moment before realizing that she didn't let you pay and you were just harassed behind and out from the counter at the cafe. When you get inside, Miranda's closing a window while the two crows perched on the sill fly away. She looks pleased. Good news? Very. What's with the crows and open windows? I'm pretty sure you had like an entire stroke my, my second week over the windows being open. I feed the birds. You hand the coffee over, your eyebrows raising. That's kind. I choose to, I can choose to be kind. Sparingly? She scoffs and you're reminded of how easily she had undone her orderly pens to throw them at you. So you raise your hand and surrender. Don't throw them, ma'am. Amusement creeps into her gaze, but she refrains from making any objects on her desk's projectiles. It doesn't take long for you to fall into her into this unusual um, into this usual rhythm of things, but naturally Miranda always has to rock the boat a little, making you slightly uncomfortable enough so that you don't settle. What fun would it be to be consistent? I think I would rather go like to go for on a walk. She sounds surprised by her own sentiment, but you take that to mean she just generally doesn't prioritize anything she wants ever, so you don't pay too much attention to it. Alright, do you need me to do anything while you're gone? Go on a walk with me. Oh. Alright, let me finish this then. You blink at her and she nods quickly, allowing you to finish typing the end of your sentence. You stand and stretch without much thought before rolling your eyes and walking to the door where Miranda is waiting for you. I'm not sure where I'd like to go. She frowns, but unlike her usual scowl, it reads more as a pout than anything else. We can just wing it. Miranda rolls her eyes for some unknown reason, but opens the door and gestures for you to lead. The two of you try and take the routes that aren't generally preferred by the student population, although there's... Although, really, there's barely a point anymore and end up wandering a little too much. One moment, you're on your university grounds. Next, you're in the woods. At first, you don't say anything, hoping Miranda knows what she's doing, but she shows no signs of turning around, and you are so desperately lost at the moment. Do you know where we are, out of curiosity? Are you lost? No. You look around. I'm perfectly aware of where we are. I just wanted to know... <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Help! If you knew. Oof. Time to pour milk on the router, monk. Miranda raises a brown amusement staring you down. I'm not lost. I have no idea where we are. In the middle of nowhere. Miranda. We are. She snickers, too playful for it to be cruelly intentioned. I'm famar very familiar with the area. Do not worry. Hello! She reaches out, just barely, but before she can complete whatever action she was attempting, there's this horrible thwack behind you, and you whip around quickly as Miranda stands to attention. When you turn, you don't see anything until there's a soft caw that makes you look down to see a crow sprawled on the ground, its wing awkwardly twisted. 
Oh, a little birdie. Behind you, Miranda takes a step forward, evening, evening the two of you out. And her face is twisted in sympathy for the crow. Poor thing. Something compels you to walk forward until you're on your knees next to the injured crow. Let's pick it up. You pause for a moment, wishing you had brought a jacket before deciding that whatever happened, happened. Gently, you pick the crow up, cradling it so cradling it so as to not hurt its wing any further. You think back to your time back you think back to your time back home when one of your closest friends had this obsession with saving every wild animal they could find. And several times they brought back a finch or some form of bird and eventually you just learned how to generally take care of injured animals. Miranda hovers behind you, almost holding her breath, inspecting the wing you coo softly at the crow. It's alright. The wing is frankly fucked up. Your brows furrow and you turn to Miranda. Can we take them back with us to get help? Your friend's habit must have rubbed off on you. Yes, of course. Would you like to turn around now? You nod, simultaneously thinking of how long it would take, how sick you might get off this bird and whether or not it would be okay. It takes you about five steps to realize maintaining a gentle hold on the crow and your balance is basically impossible, especially with the uneven ground. Here. She takes your free hand that you have been holding out in a bad attempt at balancing yourself and balances you with herself. She turns her head away and tips her ears bright red, giving her away. Thank you, pr Your vocal cords stop working suddenly. Making you incapable of finishing your sentence. You have no idea what you were going to call her. But Miranda stops and turns around suddenly, staring at you for a moment before frustration shows on her face before she turns back around. Of course, I don't want you to get hurt. You smile softly, glancing at the crow, as staring at you, imploring you imploringly from your hold. You're going to be alright. The vet makes a surprised face when he sees Miranda, but takes the burden, nodding to her. Miranda waves you off when asked about money, claiming she'll take care of it. Thank you for walking with me. Miranda goes to work as soon as she gets back to her desk, and you finish up whatever mess is left of Cassandra's disastrous little stunt. Anna Maria's written statement is covered in tear stains, and Elena's is 12 pages long. When did she even have time to do this? Much to your delight, Cassandra's sisters have sent a few on their own. However, Cassandra's own statement consists of this. I didn't do that shit. Fuck everyone that says otherwise. You admire her audacity, if nothing else. Nearing the end of your time in the office, Miranda finally stops writing. Oops. Fuck. I've decided. Okay, monk. You turn around, brows raised in confusion. Right, of course. Decided what? You're off the hook. For this. You don't have to work for me anymore. Environment, the star. You don't have to work for me anymore. What? Your confusion must show on your face because she gives you a wry smile. You can choose to come back and keep working without any outside factors affecting or stop working for me. I'll find someone else to torture, no doubt. She says that, but she doesn't exactly look like someone who would be fine if you didn't come back. Oh. <laughs> I mean, this seems like the obvious answer. Yes. Of course I'll come back. Yes, of course. You only just notice how she had been shaking, her eyes closed for a moment before a smile appears on her face. Well, aren't I lucky then? You can feel yourself take a sharp breath as she says those words to you while giving you such a look. Hmm. You barely get that out before turning around sharply. Who knew she could be such a tease? Go on, have a good rest. I'll be here for several more hours. A good rest? She's so fucking weird. Are you sure? Yes, you're coming back, are you not? I'm not- oh, I'm not worried. Oh. Well, I- alright then, I'll see you tomorrow. Miranda shakes her head. No, I have personal business to attend to. Everything is fine, but after tomorrow, yes. You nod once. Well, 
You have no idea what to do. Good night, Mira. Mir well, uh, hello. We got the nicknames? And before anything can be added, you head out the door. Soon, mother. Not soon enough. It's making them hurt, and we still haven't had any progress. They would have been in more pain if I hadn't put in drink. Shut up! Sure enough, two days later you arrive and things are in full swing. However... How stupid do you have to be to have lost the catering card? Whatever Miranda's personal business has served to only make this an utterly inhospitable area. If you're being honest, you haven't... You've been too much of a coward to go over to her. You're technically early, so you still have time to procrastinate. It's the official time for voting. It's pretty pointless since nobody is running against anybody. But this school is apparently just rich enough to waste money on something like this. Despite the student council president, Bella, who's Cassandra's sister, how different could they be? Bad enough you had to learn Daniela was their sister too, with the genetics on them. Wanted to make a good impression. Hey... Let's go, lesbians! Exactly! That's the motto for this channel. Welcome to the stream. You look up at her yell and realize she spotted you. Damn. Coffee? Thanks for following my dude, I appreciate it. You raise the hand hers is in and walk over to her. You're late. Exactly, words to live by. I'm early? You're late to me. She snatches the coffee from your hands and scowls at you. It's cold. Well, you were busy screaming at Stanley for me to do much other than wait. Uh, this is actually my last route. I have done all the other routes and Miranda is my final route. So yes, I've done the other routes. It comes out quickly and without thought. It's reminiscent of when you started first started working for her. I really like Bella's route and Danny's route. Donna's was really sweet. I didn't expect it to be like that. I don't really dislike any of the routes. I think Angie's is personally the weakest. But so far I've, I've liked all of the routes. This is a really good dating sim slash visual novel. Get your act together. Go find me Donna Beneviento. She was supposed to be here with flowers an hour ago. She physically shoves your shoulder so you can walk through, and you're almost blinded with the urge to shove her back harder. Yeah, it's it's really good, and I cannot wait. I hope either they make another Resident Evil dating sim that's like established, like the not established. These are established characters, but like Jill, Claire, or like I don't know another horror franchise. Cause they're they're really good at a. Uh, at this horror dating sim. <laughs> Mia always wants to take our bitches. Like, like we said, Mia is just a bitch snatcher. Instead, you're like an adult or whatever and slam the rest of your coffee down before storming out, ignoring the whispers of a fight brewing. Hello? It's very calm here. You could almost fall asleep. <laughs> Ethan deserved better! I've actually... So, the funny thing about this is that I never played Village before this. I played like every other Resident Evil. Um, but I did not play Village prior to this, and I started Village- I played it on Christmas. I still have to play the rest of Village, but seeing, like, the differences in characters, I'm like, wow. Yeah, no, they, they, these, these, these ones are better. Working here feels like it would be a dream. Nobody yelling in your face or moody blondes picking fights with you. Hello. Oh, you're one of Angie's friends. You smile. Your bad mood leaves you as soon as her gentle voice hits you. Being mean to her would feel like a crime. I am. Unfortunately, I am here as a messenger for someone far less friendly. Miranda. It's actually hilarious how quickly she reached that conclusion. I completely agree. Because I... The last thing I did uh, when I streamed it was do Donna and Angie's thing. And I was like, man, I wanted more. Like, pretty cool concept and, like, just cool characters. So I really wanted more of Donna. But now we have this. She's rather impatient about the flowers. You purse your lips to avoid complaining any further. 
Tell her I'll get them there by the end of the day. There was a delay in the daisies. You nod sharply. Will do. Your shop is lovely, by the way. Have a good day. Donna nods, a faint smile in her features before she disappears into the back, and you head back. When you're outside, your phone... When you're outside, your phone buzzes. Bird. <laughs> Just bird. I don't think I've been... Oh, no, there was one moment that I got scared. I can't lie. It was when... Uh, you're looking at the numbers through the window for the safe... I got scared by that. That's the one time I got scared. <laughs> I got jump scared. I fell for that stupid shit. Yeah, d d <laughs> look at look at this man grinning in the chat. Look at this man grinning in the chat. I need you to find these people: Estera, Jasmine, Nicoletta. Oh. Uh. Oh shit. I don't know why. Okay. You wait another moment before another message appears. Do not procrastinate. I want them here by two. Uh. Okay. All you get is a red receipt and nothing else. Uh, we'll just go in order. You decide to go find Estera first. And wow, she is in a scenario you never would have imagined. You were so brave only a minute ago. Anna Maria and Giselle are holding her back as if the three R's howl for someone to take her already. Take her away. Go back home or wherever you go when you're not bothering everyone else. Um, all parties stop moving as you call attention to yourself. I would ask, but I so badly don't want to know, so Estera Headmistress Miranda wants you to come with me. Ha! She wants her assistance, so really, I would treat her with more respect. She writes herself, adjusting her glasses. Right, lead the way. You walk around to find Jasmine and Nicoletta with Estera muttering behind you. Jasmine is destroying people at fo football, or soccer, as some students argue. Um, as an American, it is definitely soccer. I don't want to watch soccer slash football. I watch American football. Oh, I didn't know that there was a lore dump. I'll have to check that out. As I would consider myself... A massive Resident Evil fan at this point. The Rebeccas are a love triangle? I love that. That, honestly, I love that. They, they deserve each other, you know? They honestly deserve each other. Uh, I know they're pretty active on Twitter. Uh, let me pull up the official Twitter. I think it's, is it official underscore Avia or is it Avia underscore official? Uh, it's official underscore Avia, A-V-I-A. -A. Okay, on the Tumblr page. I'll have to look at this. See, Tumblr is like the one social media I don't use, but I'll have to, I'll have to look at their Tumblr. Yeah, because I, I definitely check their Twitter. <laughs> you may have seen my clips featured on their Twitter. They retweet me quite a bit. I appreciate them. Uh, does Jasmine is destroying people at football or soccer, as some students argue. Nicoletta is in tears over flowers to the point that you're concerned she might die of dehydration. And when it comes out, they were for Cassandra. A part of you wants to find the brunette and shake her very, very fast in frustration. You escort all three of them to where you last saw Miranda and leave them to their doom as Miranda walks through the door. Anything else? You keep your voice low. No need to antagonize her any further. She's clearly in a shitty mood. Mia. Oh, please. Anyone but her. You immediately retort to begging on that front. She failed to send me an important email last night. Go find her and harass her into it. I know she's done. She just doesn't want to write. She gives you a dismissive wave, but you clench your jaw and turn back around to go find the brunette. <laughs> Should have been to go find the bitch. It takes you two whole entire hours, but eventually you find her. Oh, have a drink with me. No, thank you. Just water. The bartender isn't the same as the one from before. It makes you feel better. 
I'm not writing that email until you've had a drink with me. Don't look at me like that. I heard Miranda's been shoving you around all day. You scowl. Do you promise to write if I get a drink? Yes. You sigh in turn. Uh, I guess this doesn't really matter. Just, I, I kind of like Coke, so... I'll have a rum and Coke. You glance at me. Uh, light on the Coke. No, not light on the Coke. That's the best part. I, I assume. Mia cheers in delight, raising her beer. I'll pay. When the bartender returns, you inspect the glass of both water and alcohol carefully. You can't see any residue. You'll just have to hope and pray, you suppose. You turn to Mia. Happy? No. What's Mary's deal today? No fucking clue, but it's making me want to strangle her. Mia considers you for a moment. I'll make you a deal. And why do I want that? You feel like you're making a deal with the devil. I mean, are, aren't we? Like, let's be for real. Because I've known her for ages. Longer than you would have probably guessed. You would probably guess. Imagine I'm going to read. You purse your lips. That is valuable knowledge, what she's implying. All right, I'll hear you out. I swear, she stood there for a whole 12 seconds before running after me. You're laughing so hard, you worry you might pee yourself. How did you how did you get that to work out so perfectly? Oh, that was mostly luck. It was supposed to be separated. So she'd think it was over, then it wasn't. I'd have really liked to know Miranda back then, I think. Mia stops laughing almost immediately as if something's dawned on her. She's not being extraordinarily mean, is she? I know she's got a temperament problem, but I would hate to think she's being her usual self towards you. You snort. She went somewhere yesterday and came back with some sort of complex about it. I don't know. Are you really gossiping with me right now? Is this really a smart thing to do? Well, you know, if you agree to be my friend, you can just sick me on her and she'll forget all about you. Oh. D oh, God. You know she only tolerates me because I'm your best friend, right? Yeah, but the two of you cat fighting is kind of entertaining. Ow, Mia. It's not nice to watch your best friend suffer. Yeah, well, it's not nice to pick fights with your best friend's girlfriend either. I'm just making sure she's right for you. Yeah, okay, you just like pushing her buttons. You knew who you agreed to be friends with. Hello, I can't tell if you're spacing out or ignoring me, or which is more offensive. I, I'm... You put a hand to your chest and shake your head. Suddenly you're feeling very sober. Okay. Mia brightens and you ask if only to prove something to yourself. Does she, like, you or tolerate you? Mia gets this starkly serious look on her face. She keeps me around for someone else's sake. If it were up to her, I'd be dead on the moon or something. You shouldn't push her buttons. It comes out weekly. What does this mean? Three days later, you're quickly approaching the final day, which is only tomorrow. It's not take you long to adjust to Mia's less than normal comments. I just think your life would be easier if she was dead. If she was dead, we'd be arrested for murder. Cute that you think we'd get caught. I appreciate the implication that you would help, though. You roll your eyes. Mia has, for whatever reason, decided to age in your long list of duties, which at the moment include hiding from an enraged Miranda in the library. But come on, it would be easy-ish. Okay, not really, but the emotional reward, think positive. Mia, we cannot kill Miranda, mostly because I'm not totally sure she couldn't kill us first. But you're open to it? Don't you work for her? And almost... Like, there had never been a time where Mia put you off. The two of you actually get along quite well, most of the time. With, with, you shove a hand over her mouth, shushing her, but quickly retract it with a disgusted hiss when she licks it. Gross, what are you, ten? Perhaps. What in the world are you two doing? You slap a hand over your mouth to avoid her hearing the frightened noise you make. Put a bell on her or something. Plotting your death. You jab her with your elbow as hard as you can, leading her to yelp in pain and whine at you. Your lack of tact is truly astounding. She pouts at you. 
When you're done wasting time, go get me a third cup of coffee. Yes, headmistress. You get it out, taking pleasure in the way she flinches, even in her angry state at the title. Good, she should suffer too if, she, if you have to. Perhaps it's the anger talking, but part of you wants her to feel the way you have in the last few days. Miserable. Miranda clenches her jaw and turns away from you, hesitating at the end of the bookshelf and turning just barely so she can see you and Mia. The two of you spill, still play fighting with each other as you move to do as you're told. If you had looked longer, would you have seen jealousy? Welcome in, Mia. Wait here. Aggressively, she points at you and gestures for you to follow her back, as it is usual for the two of you at this point. Devastating news. It seems like she's getting worse. You shake your head as Elena moves through the process. I have no idea what pissed her off originally, but it's almost ex exponential at this point. You knew she had a temper, but this was just insane. Instead of cooling off over the days, Miranda has only become more and more intolerable, and for reasons extremely unclear to you. I mean, I'm pretty sure she's just jealous at this point and has no idea what to do with it. I told you to stay up front. She doesn't do well with directions. I don't do well with directions. I'll allow it. Wash your hands and tell us more. You're such a gossip. It's Cassandra's fault. She always comes in here with such absolutely dis with the some absolutely deranged story. And now I'm hooked. It's quite boring here. Elena passes you the cup just as Mia finishes washing her hands. She hates me. She hates the Demetrius kids for varying reasons. Bella's arguable. She definitely hates Angie. And she's pretty neutral on Miss Beneviento. And you, one moment she has you all to herself, the next you're hanging around anyone but her. Okay, but that defies logic. I would be with her more if she weren't ac acting absolutely crazy. She's neutral on me? Holy shit. We could always kill her. I'm not killing Miranda. Neither are you. Mia decides she's bored. Your girlfriend's a buzzkill. And then she leaves? Miranda looks at you while you stare at Mia's retreating form with something akin to betrayal. What the actual fuck is wrong with her? What isn't? Give it here. You walk up and place it down before immediately walking back to your desk, glancing over the pile at your table. Doable. The silence is filled with tension. You're mad at Miranda, Miranda's mad at everything, and Mia went and added another variable before dipping. Bitch. You get to midday when Miranda shoes you away. Something about 15 minute breaks and legal issues. That's right, you're like a real worker now. This comes with breaks, but also structural implications. Well, think about that later. Oh. You turn and smile. She looks rather average, but she's very but she's nice, you think. The two of you make idle chit chat for a moment, and you're very conscious of how much time is passing when she asks you something that's clearly on her mind. How have you been as Miranda's assistant? You must be very good and very brave for her to have fired me for you. What? Stanley pauses, blinking at you. Hold on, you didn't quit? Goodness, no. I'm not that brave. You stared at her before slowly, very, very slowly comprehending. She told me you quit, and that's why she needed me to work for her. Stanley shakes her head sol solemnly. No, no, I was fired. But if that's what Miranda told you, maybe don't tell her I said this? No, yeah, I work with her. I know better. Thank you. Still, she's taking off running. Understandable. You go back up and continue in the same silence, but armed with your new knowledge. You can't help but glance up at Miranda every once in a while, wondering what made her so sure. Do you think reincarnation is possible? Breathe. You're on the floor. Why are you on the floor? What? You just, just pitched over. You aren't sick, are you? You shake your head. No, I, I've been having these blackouts and dreams. This is kind of like a David Cage <laughs> game. We're just blacking out, having these random dream states. You cut yourself short when you realize she's starting. She's staring at you almost predatorily, and suddenly you remember how she's been treating you recently. Please, I'm fine, ma'am. Stop it. 
Yeah, except good. I mean, I I like Heavy Rain. I, I can't lie and say that I don't. Heavy Rain's probably one of my favorite games. And I do have, like, a soft spot for Detroit. So... But the other the other uh, David Cage games, I do not like them. They're they're not good. Don't. You've been so cruel, and not even just to me, and you won't tell anybody what's wrong. I can't. Not yet. There's not a single part of it that you can talk about. You must look pretty incredulous because she hesitates, which is long enough for your point to be proven and for her to sink down. She's still holding you. You realize as you shift a little lower with her. It's foolish. Tell me anyway, I'm tired of being mad at you. Her gaze shoots to you, wounded by your words somehow. You nudge her to prompt her to continue. I was jealous. I'm sorry, you were what? She glares at you, but you refuse to back down. You know exactly what she said, but she was whispering. Plausible deniability and all that. I was jealous. Of whom? Everyone. Mia. You can't believe Mia was right. Why? Me and Mia have barely just begun to get along. Miranda hums, not truly believing, but not denying either. I apologize for taking it out on you. Only me? I'm not fond of anyone else, am I? I think if you gave Mia a chance, she would really piss you off more. I have no doubt. You look up at the ceiling. Can we not be on the floor anymore? Yes, please. She stands and helps you up, frowning in worry and what you assume might be her version of guilt. Yeah, okay, there we go. See, isn't this better? I mean, both ways. Not being on the floor and not fighting anymore. Always a mediator. She shakes her head with a smile. I will see you tomorrow. But, she shakes her head. It's going to be a long day tomorrow and it sounds like you haven't been resting well. When have you last slept properly? Do not answer, honestly. When you took me home. Rana's eyes widen. She takes your face into both her hands and yanks you close to presumably inspect your face of signs of lying or exhaustion. Go. Sleep. Take better care of yourself, please. But there's so much work, and if I don't do it, you will, and then you won't sleep. You should sleep, too. Jesus Christ. Before she can argue, there's a thwack against her window, and somehow this is becoming commonplace. The two of you turn, Miranda's shoulders dropping. Cornelius. What? What? She opens her window and pries a crow from her windowsill. It's wriggling and causing a general fuss, but you squint at it. No way. Don't. You have a pet crow? You pause. You have a pet crow and I didn't know? How have you managed to keep this from me? Cornelius sits in on meetings in the student council. He likes to repeat things. I want to pet him so bad. Cornelius stops wriggling at that, calling an interest, clearly understanding what you're saying. He also stops pretending to be incapable of flight and perches himself near you, pleased with your cooing as you gently pet his feathers. Aw, he's so cute! He's like a little baby! When he puffs up, you giggle and completely miss m Miranda behind you trying to stand just a little taller. You continue to pet him when you repeat your question. Still, how did you keep this from me? I'm capable of keeping many things from people. Her answer is starkly serious, and your f smile falls in response. Well, for future reference, you don't have to keep things from me. I'm rather fond of special treatment. I am well aware. Go to your dorms. Sleep. Can Cornelius come? You pout, not expecting her to actually agree, even with Cornelius' similar begging posture. If you think you can handle his shenanigans... Oh my god. We're just gonna bring Cornelius to the dorm room and our roommate's gonna be like, fine with it. <sighs> Shock must show in your face because she smiles in amusement while you nod quickly. Come on, Cornelius. By tomorrow, you'll like me more than Miranda. He's not hard to win over. Shh, don't listen to her truth. Who cares? Her laughter echoes in your heart as you walk back to the dorms with Cornelius, curiously calling on your shoulder. No, mother, they don't know. Good. Don't talk to them again. I don't need them mentioning I don't need them mentioning it to anyone and being informed of your recent departure. Yes, mother. 
Hopes the Hermit. She's so kind to you, you know that? Right? Pardon? She behaves like she's this misunderstood woman who just needs someone to care, but I remember. How did you get here? Earlier that day. When you had arrived with Cornelius obediently on your shoulder, Miranda had honestly looked like she wanted to curl up and die. I take care of him for years, feed him, keep him alive, can't even be bothered to stay in one place. You give him one head patch, and suddenly he's the most well-behaved. She grumbles about it for a good 15 minutes before opening the window, and he flies out free as well, a bird. Rest well. You purse your lips. Truthfully, no. Cornelius realized he did not have his usual arrangements promptly freaked the fuck out. But to admit that would be like admitting defeat. Yep. Miranda closes her window and smiles at you. I left a list of things for you to do today on your desk. Let me know when you've completed the entire list. Exactly. If your future significant other, pet, does not like you, it's Jover. You have to be the pet whisperer. You nod. Yes. You pause for dramatic effect, and maybe a little less to see Miranda's- see Miranda's- cl Miranda clench her jaw in annoyance. Mira. Miranda, for her part, does admittedly try not obliviously- obviously be delighted at this, but she fails. But it's cute, so it's okay. You let out a small laugh, nothing malicious and so obviously fond that you make even yourself a little sick from it. You pick up the list and nod. I'll get on it. You grab your phone and on your way out, take a gamble. Quickly, you reach out for Miranda before kissing her cheek chastely. And before any sort of reaction can be had, you're out the door. She makes it hard to wait. Mia steps out from the, the bookshelf. Hello! Bitch, can, can you not? Yes, it's all very sickening. I've got news. Oh, what now? Finch says something's wrong with Bella. And what would that be? She remembers that. <laughs> Mia jump scare. Absolutely. Admittedly, it had taken you half the day, but finally you completed your list and you find yourself sitting in the cafe as a break before you head back. You had already let Miranda know you were done and you were just stopping by the cafe and she had naturally requested a refill. Typical. The amount of caffeine that Miranda is drinking. We might as well just start getting her the Panera Lemonades. Because I, I think I think she's running on like 2,000 grams of caffeine a day at this point. Wait, 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 wait. So she went out of her way to get you on the staff before she even knew you. And I thought you were down bad. <laughs> Lore accurate. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe Chris Redfield had a point to <laughs> eviscerate her. I didn't see it coming at all. I'm a caffeine addict. I, I drink at least one energy drink a day. I need caffeine or I get headaches. I tried to like cut back caffeine once and I was like, no, I can't do it. I didn't see it coming either. Damn it, Finch. Who? A friend. You don't know them. Well, not really. You have one vague memory of them in a strange interaction while late to work, but otherwise she would be correct. Ah, I see, I see. I suppose they are rather selective about what information they give out. She shakes her head. Anyway, why do you look like you're hiding something from me? I'm just a barista. You can trust me with your secrets. I trust you with my coffee, not my secrets. You tell Cassandra and then suddenly the entire town knows. I would never tell Cassandra. That's just poor form and stupid. Who's stupid? You. Each, that finally, it's her first time showing up in this route. You chuckle as the two of you begin. The, uh, you chuckle as the two begin their usual banter of Cassandra flirting with Elena and Elena insulting her in response. Idly, you think if there were going to be anyone Cassandra fell in love with, it would be Elena, the only woman to never say yes to her. And with that cheery thought, you leave. The room is covered in flowers, and you have to admire Miss Beneviento's work, if anything. This had to be expensive. Most certainly, Donna charges a pretty penny for her work, but she's the best in the field, so I don't complain much. You huff in amusement. And how much do you complain? Only twice a week. Oh, that's a bargain. 
Hmm, is it? Twice I think I've heard you complain twice in ten minutes. I hardly hear you point out how annoying it is anymore. I never said I didn't like arguing with you. Oh my god. The banter! We are, we are most certainly down bad. Before either of you can continue whatever weird form of flirting this is, somebody lets out a shrill shriek and glass shatters. At least it isn't a bird this time. Bird baby. What's the bird baby doing? It's some random girl you've never seen in your life, but a vase is shattered and she's already crying when Miranda arrives, which means this is, will not be good. I- it was an accident, I swear! Like a woman possessed, Miranda strides forward, teeth bared, and backhands her. Jesus! <laughs> There's a deathly sigh in the lince that follows in, in which you struggle to pull up empathy. That's odd. You're sure that if this had happened a few months ago, you would have been cursing Miranda out, but oddly enough, you feel little to no remorse for her. Uh-oh, maybe we're getting cultified here. Miranda seemingly moves to either continue or storm past her, but you decide to interrupt. Stop. The girl looks relieved, but you only look at Miranda. The glass will destroy your shoe. You're more likely to fall than anything else. Fine, get the floor cleaned. Take her somewhere else. I can't stand it when people cry. She swivels and brushes past you, and something terribly cold fills you, and yet it feels perfectly natural. Miranda is known to be less than kind and to have an aversion to tears. Really, could she have been any stupider? You turn and follow Miranda, passing by Bella, who had apparently been watching. She stares at you. You don't know why. Bella wins. Casp, I knew the person running unopposed one. How could this be? Uh, now that you've said have I saved lately, I will save. The party continues on like it had, hadn't been inevitable, and you sit in the corner wishing you were literally anywhere else but here. On a whim, you get up to dance or maybe get drunk. Who knows? May I have this dance? Oh, we're dancing with Bella again! I really like dancing with Bella and her route. Oh. Well, fuck, I guess now you have to dance. Sure, I must warn you, I'm bad at dancing. Something akin to amusement flutters across her face. Oh, please. I'm sure you're better than you think. But then it goes away. The council room really was intended for this, but nobody had wanted to put a real dance together twice in a year. So they had settled for shifting the tables to the side to function as serving stations and asked a student to DJ. They aren't bad. You and Bella dance, and the entire time she is giving you the same look she was giving you earlier in the day, and it's extremely off-putting. May I speak with you in private? Hmm, seems like a bad idea. Sure. Bella peels away from you mid-song and pulls you away. You guess she meant this very second. Mia furrows her brow across the room, pushing off on the table she was leaning against, but then suddenly you're on the back lawn. She's so kind to you. You know that, right? Pardon? She behaves like she's this misunderstood woman who just wants someone to care, but I remember. She looks at you desperate. Why am I the only one who remembers? Alright, this is starting to freak you out so bad. Uh... Why don't we all go back inside, yeah? Mia has her bitch face on, which means listen to her. Or it's about to get really abstract for no reason. No, I can't trust you. You remember, but you're on her side. Why do you keep doing that? What the fuck is that? It's nothing. Go back inside. You glance between them before remembering that these two may be crazy women. And you should not try to get in between them. Don't kill each other. Neither of them say they won't, which is remarkably not comforting. You're sure the doors of the council room before suddenly you're slammed with. How dare you? Look, this has frankly been an all-around disaster. The only reason I'm still here is because they are still here. I ain't loyal to you, so I'll say it again. How far are you going to take this? I'll take as far as they want me to, but let me tell you, if you pull that alien and other that other freaky winged person into this, you are going to spiral. What is going on here? They're going to come with strings. It's going to get out of control fast. I will take it as far as I need to. Anything for. Even if it costs you your followers, God knows how many of them you got. Or sorry, is that slander? Beneviento has lost enough, and Demetrask is more likely 
to flip her switch if you take something from her. I have already spoken on this matter. Leave. You're lucky they love you so much or you'd be dead where you stand. I don't see the point in me leaving. They've been listening the whole time. You gasp with the door, bracing yourself against them instead of opening them. These blackouts are getting incredibly invasive. And even after, you can barely grasp what's happening during them. It's extremely frustrating, to say the least. Eventually, you catch your breath and you straighten yourself out before opening the doors. Nobody turns, so nothing disastrous happened in your absence, although the disaster might have happened with you. You're a little concerned someone is going to end up dead. There you are. I've been looking for you. Sorry, I was outside. There might have be a problem later. Not sh totally sure. Anyway, what's up? Is something wrong? I leave for five minutes. No, nothing's wrong. I just... Uh, she goes red. I just wanted to give you something. Intrigued, you lean forward, but she yanks it back suddenly. It's uh, not as expensive as it looks. That makes me think it's extremely expensive, but okay, may I see it now? Do not make fun of me. Her voice comes out soft and makes you smile at her sweetly. I won't. Outwardly. She opens her hands as in a very expensive looking pendant that is shockingly reflective. Shiny almost. Get it? Because she's a crow and crows like shiny objects? Yes. Genu gently, you take it from her and inspect it a little closer, careful with your facial expression as Miranda stares you down. I like it very much, Mira. You do. She then startles. You do. Of course you do. Will you help me put it on? You offer your hand back to her with the pendant, and she gives you this un unidentifiable look as you ask. You want to wear this for everyone to see? This is the that is generally how necklaces work, yes. When she and Cornelius get together, you might say it's an attempted murder. <laughs> I appreciate the jokes and the puns. We need we need bird coated. I know there was uh oh god, what was the bird dating sim? Fuck. Oh my god, what is that bird dating sim called? We need that, but like not birds, but humans. But they're coated like birds. Oh god, what is the bird dating sim called? Why am I blanking so hard on it? I need to Google this. How to full boyfriend. That's what it was. Uh, we need... <laughs> Signalis! I have heard nothing about Signalis except that it's very gay. And is all I know about Signalis. I... Okay. Yeah, we, we need how to full girlfriend, but uh, n no actual birds, but just bird looking women. She helps you put it on and you survey the room. Nobody seems to care that the two of you aren't behaving like boss and subordinate. In fact, Cinder and a leather clad person more interested in throwing the other out the window. One side of it is for fun. The other so seems to be revenge based. Old-fashioned survival horror has to do with a gay robot trying to find her wife. Maybe I'll have to look into that. Because I've seen art on Twitter of Signalis, but I haven't, like, watched someone play it or play it myself. Finch, or at least you think it's Finch, is people watching with sharp eyes, occasionally nodding to themselves. MJ, Danny's friend, skating buddy sometime, something, whatever, is laughing happily with a few students. I've heard it's really good. I just haven't looked into it. But I do like the art that I see on Twitter. And Avery is just kind of hopping from group to group with seemingly no desire to stay in one for long. There. Now you're wearing it. You turn with a smile, reaching out with little fear. You're rather cute when you're embarrassed. Well, you're the only person who seems to make me so. Something vicious overtakes you for a moment. Good. The night goes on, and just as you think you're beginning to think Mia and Bella have simply gone home, you see Mia pass a window and almost spit out your drink. Oh god. Oh boy. Oh shit. What the fuck happened? Is Bella dead? Did you kill the student council president? No, Bella's better off than me. God, she hits like a truck in her nails. She's fine. I'm fine. You look like you fell off a building. 
Meh, that would have felt better. Then I would have died and not had to feel this right now. You promise nobody's dead? Both me and Bella made it out alive to tell the story. He glanced at them, taking their bloodied appearance. You need to change of clothes so bad. Wow, okay, come on. I almost wish I had killed her. He starts with zero prompting. But Miranda and them, they would have been so mad at me. Them? Her super secret girlfriend or whatever. Ignoring the way she said mad, like she wasn't talking about murder, you furrow your brows in concentration. Where are you remembering that from? Oh wait, you- oh wow. Both you and Mia freeze. This really isn't what it looks like. Nobody's dead yet. Nobody's dead ever. Yet. Ever. I'm not doing with this doing this with you. What did you need, Avery? Avery stares at Mia for a few moments before shaking themselves out of it. This book. Someone said it was yours. Wasn't sure who, though. They frown in thought while you take the book that is almost certainly not yours and flip through it. The pages when a note flutters to the ground. Avery's already gone when you look up, so you bend over and pick it up. You are cordially invited to the next meeting of the Cult of Eva. Though the name is scary, we have good intentions and found you to be worthy of joining our ranks. Meet our representative in three days in the backwoods northeast. They will find you before you find them. Congratulations on your invitation and welcome. Reading it over a few times, you come to the conclusion that this is hella fucking suspicious and they definitely have something hidden. You remember a long time ago, Miranda had asked you about strange groups. Is this what she had meant? Did that mean you should tell her? Besides, you, Mia, Mia grunts and you remember what you were doing. Right, you need to stop bleeding, like now. Please, that sounds nice. Let me go this instant. Did you know that when I first met you, I had such high hopes? I'd even say that I was rather fond of you. My, how the times have changed. Are we... do we have to do this? Now, 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 dear, remember who's at stake for you. She must be reset. She's already torn through the spell this time, and I need you to drug her to sleep long enough for me to do my job. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, Bella. Panic sets into Bella's face, and she begins to struggle against her bindings more. <laughs> oh, this is sad. I don't want to see Bella suffer. She begins to struggle against her bindings more and more, the less space there is between them. Auntie! She's shrieking now, uncharacteristic in the wild display of emotions, but utterly doomed because of it. When she's down, Mother speaks again. Good. Outcome 1. The wheel. Okay. The next day after figuring out what to do with Mia's bloodied clothes, you go straight to Miranda's office, despite it being an actual school day for you. When you knock, you can hear a cold permission to enter. What do you- oh. She blinks, startled at your presence. I was under the impression you had a lecture to attend to today. I do, I'm missing it. Cautiously, Miranda ventures to ask. Why? I've- I've received a note that made me remember something you said to me months ago. Miranda puts her pen down and gives her your full give you her full attention. It's an invitation for the cult of Eva? Miranda keeps her face fully blank for a moment before she holds out a hand to indicate she'd like to see the note. She reads it quickly before handing it back to you. Yeah, so the group I was attending, attempting to inquire about back then, I haven't been able to get any way into it in order to f find out more. She hesitates. But perhaps you could help me. I'm sure nothing bad happens to you, of course. I don't want you to get hurt. But this would be extremely helpful information for me as a headmistress. You chew on your lip for a moment. The note had initially scared you. Everything about it implied that they already knew everything about you. And it made you uncomfortable. But if Miranda needs the help... I... well, alright. But I don't want you to get hurt, either. You give her your best serious expression before you falter under your own expression. I won't, but I do adore the way you care. Of course I care. Miranda cautiously stands and walks around the desk to you, her pace starting slow before she speeds up suddenly in order to reach you faster. You reach out almost unconsciously when she is finally right in front of you. Of course you care. I fear that I may care too much. 
That doesn't sound like a bad thing to me. Whatever dance you two have been doing seems to be over now. Although you're not totally sure what prompted her sudden desire to cross this line. She takes in a sharp breath before her seemingly making up her mind and suddenly taking you by the collar of your shirt and yanking you towards her. One moment you're talking about your feelings, the next Miranda is kissing you. You make a shock sound before closing your eyes and kissing her back, ignoring all logic. For someone of her stature, she is surprisingly strong, so when you pull away for, her, for breath and something utterly feral flashes across her face, she yanks you back before you can both get a good breath in. Kissing Miranda, it's not soft or gentle, it's claiming, and you can understand clearly how owned you are right now. It should probably be more horrifying that you don't find any issues with it. Finally, Miranda seems sated enough to not require your t entire attention. You may regret saying such a thing. No, I won't. I love you. It said more as a warning than anything else. Her either, her way of telling you to leave while you can. It's not uncommon to find that people who show the least emotions feel the most. But Miranda looks dead serious as she says this. She's telling the truth. Oh, God. Uh, we're just gonna... Just in case... I love you too. Miranda's nail guards dig into you just a little more than that, and yet you find that you don't care quite as much as you should considering the pain. I'm rather possessive. Okay. And I get jealous easily. I know. You don't care. No, I want you and everything that, come that you come with. Miranda's eyes darken. I'm trying to be on my best behavior, little crow. I'm sorry. You smile cheekily at her, and she takes a step back and back of her hand to her mouth. Three days. Hmm? You move forward to hear her better. The, the meeting isn't for three days, so how about I take you to dinner as a distraction, hmm? Only a distraction? No, I have my own self-interest at heart. You think back to a very every, every instance of you pondering on her beauty, or even when you found her to be particularly attractive. And you wonder how you managed to get her to want you back. You aren't the only one. Miranda smiles widely, wide. Tonight, then. Tonight. You don't have any plans, and if you did, you're ashamed to admit it. You would have canceled them last minute. Alright, then. Go to your lecture. You might catch some of it. Perhaps, but you doubt it. What the fuck am I supposed to wear to this? Wear to what? Nothing. Angie would never let it go if she know where you, knew where you were going. You're utterly panicked, but finally you find something that could work. Maybe. You want to look nice for her, but you don't want to look... But you don't want to be uncomfortable. Uh, well, I'm more of a suit person. So I'm going to go with a suit. Angie has remained steadfast in her desire to know where you were going with who, but you haven't caved yet. Yet. When you're finally dressed for the occasion, you swipe your phone and head out. Only a few hours after she had asked, you realize just how planned this needed to be if you weren't going to get any lawsuits and had convinced Miranda that meeting up instead of being picked up was a better idea. For someone who had been so inexplicably rude to you when you first met, she was surprisingly chivalrous and had dragged her feet at the idea at first. You are not proud of how you got your way. But all's well that ends well, you hope. When you finally arrive at the location she sent, you stare wide-eyed at the area. This town is tiny as fuck, and yet somehow, no matter where you go, there's always such a rich district. There are a few familiar storefronts, and one that is entirely in a different language. Is that Italian? No, but it looks like it. You're early. So are you. Miranda smiles at you before taking in what you're wearing. Your heart thumps in your throat, but she only nods before making eye contact with you. Perfect. See, she loves the suit. Let's go. Letting out a shaky breath, you pull yourself together. If you can't even handle this, how in the world are you supposed to survive a date with her? So you refuse to give me details, quoting some mysterious thing called romance. The first date should not be a surprise. It's part of the excitement. Let me get some hydration here. That feels like something I would say instead of you. 
Miranda closes her eyes, something serene passing over her for a moment. Doesn't it? I suppose that's what falling for you has done. She reaches out and hooks your arms with hers, gently leading you through the streets. Since you were so concerned about my image, we're going to, well, figure it out as we go. Who are you? She's visibly uncomfortable with this prospect, but does seem willing to try and go on a completely randomized date. Try is the key word. Are you sure this isn't going to freak you out? No. You close your eyes and huff. You suppose if she really dislikes it that much, she'll pull a out a backup plan. You're 100% convinced she has one. And you're not doing this because you think this is what I want? I pardon? Because I don't like a Miranda who's so easygoing and would never t yell at anyone ever. I like Miranda who has a stroke when we're one minute late to the next item on the agenda, which is itemized and down to the second. There's a pause. We have reservations at the Cajun restaurant down the street. Am I correct to assume you're attempting to lead me there while I see while seemingly at back? We're going to be late. Man, that was terrible. Truly like wow. I frankly do not understand how they how. She goes from angry to incredulous very quickly, and you're right there with her. Your server had barely survived Miranda's temper and quite and honestly said to the restaurant, you're going to tank them on Yelp. What a what a fantastic date. Tanking restaurant reviews on Yelp. I definitely need, like, regular people food. Burgers. I want burgers so bad right now. I have no idea where to get burgers. <laughs> There's no way you're getting good Cajun in fucking Romania. There's gotta be a McDonald's in Romania, right? Oh my, Miranda doesn't know something? Alert the press. She thwaps you on the shoulder with a scowl and you find it in yourself to ask a pedestrian where the nearest fast food place is. <laughs> you don't want English beans and when you want Mexican food? Oh, we don't got burgers. Well, we don't got good burgers, but there's a pizza place. They're cheap and okay-ish. Do we have okay-ish burgers? We have bad burgers. Damn, not the bad burgers! You groan, but ask for directions if only to reorient, reorient yourself since you've never been on this side of the town. Okay, it's gonna be a trek if I'm honest, and you're in heels, which astounds me, so that's fine. You look at her incredulously. You can't be you can't seriously be intending to walk all the way over there in heels. Not only is this unplanned, it's going to hurt. Miranda sighs. Alright then, you get the food and I will get the alcohol. Scandalous headmistress gets us getting a student drunk. My priorities have never been known to be in order. Ah, uh, contra- that uh, ah, contraire. That's- I totally know French. I think your priorities are perfectly aligned. Is that so? Then wouldn't have anything- that wouldn't have anything to do with me paying for the alcohol, would it? I'm offended. Ugh, I'm- I better get going if I'm going to be home in a reasonable time. Oh my god, where- when did you say- what did you say? Nine? Nine is a perfectly reasonable time to return you to your dorms. Yeah, what time do you think I go to bed on average? Because it's not as early as nine. Really, you're lucky to actually be asleep by midnight. But I appreciate the attempt, Mira. She grumbles with a furrow in her brow as she <laughs> walks phone out, assumedly searching for directions to a liquor store good enough for her. You watch her fondly for a moment before turning and making your way to Poppy's Pizza. Okay, then. Are we having a picnic? You teeter precariously on a fallen tree, balancing with arguably too much focus. Miranda walks beside you, fretting over your lack of impulse control. Fuck. I just- I think this is a bad idea. You're very prone to foolishness and injury. Please get down. You pause, hopping- hoping just a little- Oh, hopping just a little to face her and maintain your stance on the log. Please, I'm not getting down and you should come up. You have always been a lightweight. What? You had returned with the pizza to where you thankfully left that terrible place of bad food and Miranda had been glaring at passerby. The audacity to walk in a public area. You had intended to sneak up on her, but quickly thought better of it and instead announced your return, delighting in the complete 180 her face made. She had lifted her brown paper bag that had no doubt an expensive alcoholic beverage inside, and by then you had reached her. 
You have pizza, right? He mocked. You have had pizza, right? You had mocked before Miranda scowled at you falsely. Something utterly pleased flickering in her eyes. Not for s quite some time, but yes. She had wrapped an arm around your waist and swung you closer and out of the way of someone on a skateboard. If you had squinted a little, you might have seen a flash of red hair. And then Miranda had insisted you come find somewhere else to go, apparently tired of this common folk. After a considerable amount of teasing, the two of you had managed to find your way back into nature, and eventually you had begged Miranda to try pizza. Suddenly, she hadn't been feeling very hungry when it was time to eat. You were suspicious of her excuse. She did not like it. A couple of words like monstrosity and disgusting were thrown out by her after eating it, but you had pitched over in laughter at her startled expression upon taking the first bite. And that had all been very nice, sweet even. Miranda even allowed herself to behave a little more human, and you had giggled almost the whole time. But then Miranda had decided she ought to take out the bottle of wine she bought, and yes, there is no doubt that it was expensive, but there is an important factor that you forgot. For as long as, she could, as you could remember in your drinking career, you have suffered from a very serious problem, being a lightweight. So Miranda, without thought, handed the bottle of liquor o bottle over, shrugging when you ask about the hygiene of this, and you drank with the equal thoughtlessness. But now, as you stand on balance on an elevated surface with Miranda below you, hands slightly out and reach to catch you when you fall, because you most certainly would, you think maybe you should have thought a little more. I'm fine, just tipsy. Your case is not helped when you over-enunciate the consonants, but they sound silly, so you can't really help it. Darling, really, I must feel... If I'd feel better if you were down here with me instead of up there. You playfully squint at her. Are you flirting with me to try to get me down? Yes, please stop frightening me. I'm very fond of you. Stop. Why should we? It's too late for them anyway. This is blurry. You can't tell what's going on, but for some reason everything is fading and flickering. What have you done? You're cursed. They'll be joining Eva soon. The group to your right turns and leaves, and... Oh, you're on the ground. No, 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 not again. Darling, I need you to talk to me. I'm sorry. I'll rip them apart for this. How dare they try to take you from me, too? Her movements become desperate. Why? What are you missing? And for a moment, everything is white. Do you believe in reincarnation? There's a little girl, blonde and perfect, just like Miranda, except her eyes. You call without thinking. Eva? Roaring pain ignites you on your spine. You cry out before Miranda gently pushes you back into lying position. They're happening more often now, aren't they? You look at her, suddenly panicking. Who is she? Miranda's eyes widen. The little girl, I can't. They're so real. The little girl- oh, that's me. The little girl, I can't. They're so real when they happen. Tell me. What? Tell me what this one was about. You hesitate but cling to her. This is becoming commonplace for you to black out and wake with Miranda holding you, holding on to you for dear life. Still, your back hurts and you can only assume you blacked out and immediately pitched off the log. I, I don't know where I was, but there was these people and they were so mad. Even I can't remember how frustrated I seemed to be like, see, seemed to be like they didn't understand what I was trying to do. It's already trying to slip away from you, but you stubbornly but stubbornly you cling on to it, if only so Miranda can remember. Then everything got fuzzy and I was on the ground and you were there. But you were also angry and this little girl, she she looked like you get so dizzy for a moment you think you might throw up everything in your stomach, and it must show because Miranda stops you. This sounds very stressful, darling. Have they all been like this? I don't know. I can never remember them for long, only vaguely understand that they happened and it was important. Only in short bursts, not non-permanence. You turn, confused by her words, and she shakes her head before you can ask what she's talking about. Don't worry, let's get you up and off the dirt. Miranda helps you to your feet and brushes a few twigs from your shoulders. Are you in any pain? You wince. My back, it hurts so bad, I wasn't even up that high. Miranda coos softly, turning you over so she can examine your back. She gently places a hand near your lower back and moves it up periodically, adding pressure to it until you let out a small yelp of pain. Hmm, right here? Yes, there, that. 
The way your words can be taken out of context make you redden and suddenly incapable of speech. So instead you just nod your head. Is something wrong, my love? Summoning your courage, you turn your neck carefully not to hurt yourself. No, nothing at all. This might hurt, but it will make it feel better in a moment. Miranda does something, and it does hurt like hell, but only for a few moments later, and the pain is gone. There. Hmm, I didn't know you could do that. Miranda doesn't let go of you just yet, opting instead to twist you towards her so that she can see you properly and trace you with her eyes. Her eyes are so blue, but you can see flecks of gold in them, and even red. What is it? What? You're allowed to look at me, but I can't look at you? Don't tease me. A thrill runs down your spine, and it's not fear. All alone here in the woods, where nobody can fi could find you. A low growl emanates from Miranda, and your nose brushes just so. Beep! Miranda freezes in place. She pulls away from you before pulling out an honest-to-god pager and glares at it. Her eyes go over wherever it is written, although it can't be that long, multiple times before she purses her lips in frustration and pockets it. I... You shake your head, thinking clearer than you had before. It's alright, I'll talk to you later. Walk with me back? Yes, of course. She reaches out. Instead of hooking your arm with hers like you did at the beginning of the date, she loops it around your waist and holds you close. You end up splitting up near where you met, and Miranda gives you this look of promising something, before completely ignoring your concern over her image and pressing a kiss to your cheek, a way of saying goodbye. Don't go anywhere. Her voice is frail and compels you to assure her that you aren't going anywhere. I won't, I promise. She separates from you and walks the opposite direction you're heading, her pace suddenly faster. All the way home. You're filled with... Thoughts of... Her. Outcome 2, The Lovers. Alright, I have to know. You pause mid-step, sensing they're talking to you. Know what? How in the world did you tame her, the untamable? She was so interesting before, completely unflappable, but now she stares at you? How did you do it? You know, I'm not really sure. One day she hated me, the next day she didn't. Truly a miracle. You can't tell if they're being weird or if they're just used to it. Is it bad if you're used to it? Actually, while I have you, I've always wanted to know, why blue? As opposed to purple? Psst. That's not what you meant. But really, is it voodoo with sacrifice? What's your deal? I do like their style. Shaking your head, you scratch the back of your neck awkwardly. Ah, uh, none of the above. I was just myself. What the f- What the fuck? What was that? That isn't quite what I meant, but- Oh, oh hey, MJ! <laughs> MJ, hey! Don't just walk away and ignore me. They leave all on their own, chasing a familiar figure- out the door into the streets. You huff an amusement at their behavior before continuing on your walk back. Tamed Harley, it's more like you're being tamed if anything. Not that, it's hard. Mira, have you considered not drinking this? No. Have you considered it's difficult to make? Yes. And? It's my coffee order. Randa smirks after she swipes the cup from you, taking a large sip before setting it back down. Nobody has complained before. Because you're scary? Not too scary, though. I don't count. I have a death wish and a weakness for women. Randa leans back on the desk before tucking you close, hooking your chin on the crook of her finger. For all women are just me. Stuttering, you unconsciously lean into her. That is a trap. Fortunately, you don't have to lie to sidestep it. It's just you. You don't sound too certain. I am. She isn't holding on to you at all, yet when she moves her finger under your chin, you follow it obediently, even as she leads you closer, especially as she leads you closer. I suppose I believe it. Following the natural instinct to poke back at her, you can't help but parrot a similar question back at her. Suppose. Miranda tasks, thumb coming up to hold you in place. I believe it, you insufferable little crow. There's a moment where you two simply stay put where you are, captured Miranda pleased at her catch, and the soft chatter of students outside walking to their morning class. Poor fools. Just as you decide to push forward, Miranda turns her head and denies you. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, work first. 
cruel and unusual. Surprised, Miranda lets out a laugh and kisses your temple. Work fast, love. I'm not known for my patience. With anybody else, that would have been a threat. However, you burn it all you burn all the more at it. Yes, ma'am. Insufferable. You like it. Miranda smiles, eyes full of secrets, and doesn't say a word. The next few days are the same, Miranda waving a carrot at you and you chasing after it like always. There seems to be a general consensus that the rumors are true, and suddenly Miranda goes from furious over the invasion of privacy to be completely fine with it. She had gone through the entire convoluted plan to, just to get people to stop talking about her, and now she's actively working against you, so that everybody knows that you're hers. She was not lying when she said she was possessive. Even the idea of someone else, somebody else taking an interest in you would be enough to set her off. But now as you sit in class, Professor Demetrust instructing and occasionally giving you a side eye, you realize how utterly distracted you are with all of this. When you manage to tune in, you take notes of her words. Exams are coming up quickly. You, should, you really shouldn't be distracted right now, and mostly you think about Miranda. Eventually, class ends and you're left to pack up. You can feel Professor Demetrist glaring at you, and you try to move as fast as possible to avoid any confrontation. Had she noticed you weren't paying attention, and you can't say you're not surprised considering likely weren't that subtle about it. You. You look up from where you're sitting and you see her pointing at you. Awesome. Come here, I'd like to speak with you. You get up cautiously towards her, wearing a scolded puppy expression, no doubt. I have heard of murmurs about the campus of possible scandal bet brewing between you and the headmistress. Oh, this might not be good. You have? Your voice comes out two pitches higher than usual, and it makes you close your eyes and immediately give up the act. Stupid stress making you have a shitty poker face or poker voice. So it's true, then. You are setting yourself up for failure, little one. You're not ready. Perhaps I ought to talk with the headmistress about this. Go. You're dismissed. Part of you wants to talk back, but another part of you knows it'd be more entertaining and easier for you to let Miranda handle it. Maybe I'm not ready, but it's not for you to, to, to decide. You feel aged all of a sudden. You haven't changed. Professor Demetrius' eyes widen, her mouth opening in possible indignation before you turn. Have a good day. You have no idea what possessed you to say that, but the way she had immediately reacted to it makes you think that perhaps you should be taking this moment of instinct a little more seriously. Tell me you aren't actually sleeping with her. One foot in the door and you're already being confronted. Daniela, while seriously, is gripping a pom-pom purine st stuffed animal. It's making it difficult to take her seriously. I'm going to need some context. You've got game. Can't believe you did it. Headmistress is so serious all the time. Although, I think she hates me. She does. What are you wearing? My investigating clothes. I doubt you got much done. Anyone could spot you a mile away. Oh, t bye. Angie pouts, demands that you demands you not to say anything, goes to change. I'm back. Now let's talk about you sleeping with the headmistress. I'm not sleeping with her. Angie squints at you and Daniela doesn't shift at all. We haven't gotten that far yet. Tell me everything right now. Oh my god, this is so cool. My very own roomie with the headmistress? How did you do it? Is she mean in bed? You haven't gotten that far. Sorry. I don't really know what to what to anyway. I don't really want to know anyway. You're not, like, in trouble, are you? It's a poor way of phrasing it, but you understand what Daniela is asking you. I'm alright, I'm choosing this. Andy is still prattling on about how cool this is, and she wants to know truly- She tr wants to truly know everything, and you find yourself wishing you had just run out the door. Is she, like- Is she mean, like, step on me mean, or is she nicer? fetus monster yeah where's the fetus monster <laughs> i'm not answering that so she is mean goodbye as long as you're okay it's a slippery slope when it comes to her you'll tell us if something's wrong right oh yeah Rumi. if she messes with you you should tell us i would lose in a fight against her but i'd fight her anyway i've always wondered how strong she is i know she can win any verbal fight but like i've never seen her punch anyone I feel like it'd be really interesting to watch, but anyway, yes, I promise to tell you if something is wrong. 
<laughs> we, you know, bring, let's, let's make like the accurate versions of them. Put, imagine that as like a DLC that like you can reskin them as what they look like in the game. That'd be an interesting concept. And add new characters such as, as the baby. They both stare at you as if to verify you're not lying before glancing at each other and nodding. Well, anyway, I'm going to the skate park. Oh, wait for me. It's fun to watch you destroy the hopes and dreams of lesser skaters. That isn't the point. I'm not that good. Um, yeah, you're the best. Hey, hey Angie, don't be flirting with my girl over here. Daniela grabs her skateboard as quickly as she can, and Angie obviously follows her, fluttering her about her like a butterfly. You wonder if Angie is truly that oblivious, or if she just does it to ease the tension. When all is said and done, you spent the last few hours making sure you aren't about to be blindsided with questions. You need a drink. You huff when you see Miranda's already there, but you make your way over. I show up before you once, and you make it your personal mission to be earlier than me. I'm competitive. I'm aware. Everyone is aware. How is your day assistantless? Boring. Nobody to bother. Tragic. And yours? I don't have an assistant, but I wish my day was boring. What are you drinking? Old fashioned. You mime a gag. Okay, not getting that. What is that, a double? Are you sure your, your day was boring? Precisely why I need a drink. I haven't had anyone to yell at. She pauses, furrowing her brow. It's rather odd that nobody needed me for something stupid. They were busy asking me questions. You've made everyone extremely interested in my life, by the way. I was absolutely blindsided by all the questions. Did anyone act out of line? No retaliation. My roommates were very inquisitive and I had the strangest interaction with Professor Dimitrescu. You don't elaborate. Angie's already on thin ice. Danny was just worried. And the professor, honestly, you want to see that pan out naturally. But Miranda gives you a look. Nobody acted out of line. I was just woefully unprepared. You capture the attention of the bartender. Uh, f Give me a vodka. Fuck it. Miranda widens her eyes as you take the cold shot. Uh, Whiskey? You drink successfully ordered. You turn your back towards Miranda. Really, it's fine. She doesn't really look like she believes you, but she does drop it, which means she will investigate things on her own. You can't win them all. Are you sure you're alright with the way people are talking? You were so upset about it before. Miranda flashes her eyes towards you. Do you care what people say? Uh, no. Not really. If I let everyone's opinions affect me all the time, I'd be paralyzed. Besides, I'm not some secret and neither are you. I'm glad to hear you say that, little crow. She gives you a pleased expression leaning into your space. I don't care either. You're mine. If anybody has an issue with it, well... A, <laughs> a dark expression flickers over her face as she refocuses on you, alluring with her expression. I'll fix it then. You swallow thickly at the look she's giving you. It's an amorous... It's amorous at minimum, and at most your prey. Her prey. The bartender sets your drink down, a sudden pop of business having distracted them, and you nurse it, turning towards the bar and closing your eyes. You can feel Miranda's gaze on you and it only serves to distract you. You're trying to take it slow with the alcohol, but she's making you want to drink fast so you can leave. You hold the glass away from your lips for a moment in order to take a breath and open your eyes again. You find yourself wishing you hadn't. You shouldn't drink so fast, little crow. You take another drink, not looking away just yet, but Miranda tips herself forward just slightly and holds the, the hand your drink is in still. If you aren't going to slow down, I'll make you slow down. Oh, why is she so attractive for telling you what to do? She pries the drink away from your mouth, wiping the remnant off your lips, clearly uncaring that most people are certainly watching her. Messy. You are being tremendously unfair right now. I'm not sorry. Mm. She gently opens your mouth and tilts the glass slightly, your drink trickling into your mouth and then... And the eye contact gets almost unbearable. She pulls it away with your mouth when your and your mouth closes. Are you really patient enough to wait for me to finish it like this? You might have a point. 
Suddenly, she puts it against your mouth, your mouth opening on instinct and tilts it accurately. The rest of it goes down quickly, and you almost sputter in disgust from how quickly you have to swallow it. There. Red in the face, you register a clack as she places it down harshly. Put it on my tab. She gestures vaguely towards the bartender and gets up. Well. In this lighting, her eyes almost look like they're glowing. They're st staring right at you, filled with much in so much intent. Standing, you take a step closer, linking your hands together. Let's go. Miranda's home is just as ridiculously spartan as you remember it, but unlike last time you were here, you have more important things to focus on rather than Miranda's terrible work-to-personal life ratio. Be still. Do not make me tie you up. Oh, we're, we're going there, huh? She pauses in consideration. Yet. I can't help it. I swear you're doing that on purpose. I would never. Now sit before I make you. Idly, you think that this is threat isn't really working for her the way she thinks it is. You had barely stumbled into her house off balance because you had nudged Miranda forward. Welcome, welcome. We're about to fuck our headmistress. <laughs> because we have the ultimate Riz. Dead by daylight. How did the games go? Hopefully not rage inducing. Man, this this route is so long. It's definitely the longest route in the game. You barely stumbled into her house off balance because you had nudged Miranda forward when she stopped suddenly in the walkway. Naturally, she had nudged back a little harder. Two steps past her and she already locked the door and completely stolen your breath. It was as if she had waited so long and suddenly she had enough and now and had to have you now. Not that you were complaining. It had taken several failed attempts before Miranda caved to your demands of not being in the literal front doorway. Now she has you sat in the bed, and the two of you are practically fighting each other, hence the bickering. Oh, I love fighting in bed. My, my favorite. My love, if you do not obey, I will get the leash and train you- JESUS CHRIST! The leash?! Hold on, hey yo! Oh fuck, that does not sound terrible, but just before you can lose yourself in that thought, Miranda ducks down and bites before finally prying your hands away from the zip of her dress. Smugly victorious, Miranda pins you to the bed. Tell me if you don't like it. <laughs> What's going on here, yo? <laughs> Pupils blown, she smirks, and you lose all general train of thought after that. Privately, however, when you're just about to fall asleep, you answer one of Angie's questions. My favorite activity, fighting in bed. Uh, yep. We're, we're playing Smackdown versus Raw. Oh, it's still going? I'm sorry, but this route is so long. I didn't think it would be this long. Waking up the next morning, she had been far more domestic than you had imagined Miranda capable of. But then again, she also nursed you back to health when you had been sick and you hadn't seen that coming either. Her arm is wrapped firmly around your waist and you're curled just right enough that your face fits into the crook of her neck when lying down. It's perfect. Until you have to go to the bathroom. Miranda... <laughs> really? Really? Miranda, while more touchy than usual recently, is still an extremely touch-averse person on most days, but this is a different person. Uh, I'm not sure how much longer we have this route. I, I thought this route would have been over like over a half hour ago, but we're still going. This is a sleep Miranda who became upset when you tried to pry yourself free. I'm coming right back. Winding you try to wriggle your way out with even less luck than before. Now Miranda's brows are furrowed in her sleep like she's trying to figure out why you're attempting to leave the bed even in sleep. Mira, I need to go to the bathroom. No response. Mira. Not the response you wanted as you feel yourself getting miraculously pulled closer. It does manage to get a huff of amusement out of you as you idly sweep her hair out of her, out of her face. It's rather messy and lacks its usual neat and tidy presentation. Instead, it is widely tangled and a few strands are very insistent on falling into 
her mouth. Still, you detangle her hairs as you try to wake her up gently. Pretty bird, please. There's a soft sound of content below you. You actually look down to a waking Miranda who, for all accounts, seems a little disoriented. This confusion is your opportunity as you slip out from her arms. Do you have any casual shirts? Miranda, who looks ethereal in this light, doesn't say a singular helpful word and just stares at you. Well, fine, then you turn and quickly enter the bathroom, noting a confused tone from Miranda as you do so. When you go back, she's still in bed, as if waiting for you to return, and you shake your head with a huff. Come back. Her voice is raspy from sleep, and it makes her all more convincing as you easily let yourself be coaxed back into the bed with her. And once you're close enough, she locks her arms and pulls you in, maneuvering so that once again you're trapped. Stay. So one word... It's only one word, but you're suddenly hit with the desire to never leave. It's an undesirable thought, after all. Miranda seems so insistent that she wants you with her, always. Frankly, you're a little too comfortable where you are to get, want to go. I will. The next you wake, it's because Miranda herself is waking you. Mm. You open your right eye to peek at whatever it's disturbing you, only to find it's Miranda impishly perched on the bed. She does have casual clothes. She's wearing one right now. I wish her clothing actually changed. And her nails are skittering along the arm that had been protected by the blankets. Mira. Hmm? Come here. It's technically an order, one of the many things Miranda does not receive well, but she does as she's told when you sit up and crook your finger. You grip the shirt in your hands and tug, pleased when Miranda goes pliantly along with you for no other reason than she's willing, and kiss her good morning. Never have you been more glad to walk into that office without a care in the world, whether you pissed her off. You find it doubtful she would have ever liked you if you had constantly stubbed for yourself and pushed her buttons. Remember when one of the options was to push her buttons, but that didn't seem like the right one? Fuck. Fuck. A soft rumble emanates from Miranda, and she apparently doesn't get hungry. You're left to assume she's making that noise from her voice. You pull away, eyes still littered from sleep. Morning. Good morning, little crow. You let out a sigh when she brings a hand up to gently stroke at your cheek. Do you have any spare clothes for me to wear? I don't particularly want to wear last night's again. Yes, one moment. She gets up and disappears for a mi minute or two. Enough for you to actually wake up and you change into it as soon as it's offered. Change of clothes, at least temporarily secured. You meander over to Miranda, who's studying something on the desk in her room. You must make a face at the reminder of work because Miranda actually slides back into place as if she wasn't reading at all. Let's go! Time to be Junko! Not excited for work? Is anybody? Simply don't go then. I work for you? Yes, and if you want to stay here for the day... Stay here. I'm too pleased to care whether, you're, whether or not you're working. Are you? Extremely so. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's still going. Oh, I'm starving, dude. <laughs> I'm hoping this route ends soon. I didn't think it would be this long. Miranda catches your lips in for another kiss. She gives them so freely now that she knows she can- and she smirks at you. I think so? Mine. What am I eating, though? That's That's what I gotta figure out, too. Your neck flushes at her words, but you don't disagree. She's gently possessive of you, but this comes with pros and cons, which she does make a point not to a point to mention to you. Like I think we're in the ending, but we're like it said part two of like ending, and I'm like, what anything I want? Anything. I feel like like there's still things we haven't resolved, so that's why I'm like, oh god, how much more is there? Well, there's something I've kinda always vaguely wanted to do. You lean close, murmuring despite the fact that it's only you two present, and Miranda listens with rapt attention before her mouth parts in surprise. I really... You nod. Oh my... We're about to fuck on the desk? Hey yo, The desk? Okay then! <laughs> you walk quickly, quickly balancing two coffees, your notebook, and your phone as well. No, yes, oh my god, seven, not eleven. That's not even on the dial. Grani, you continue to listen to the automated message. This is what you get for forgetting to renew your license 
that added the fact that technically it's from another country. It's making an absolute nightmare to try and figure out how to get it renewed. You're a little tired of walking around everywhere. People are giving you strange looks, whether it's because of how much you're caring or because you're getting rather loud and irritated. How irritated you are about this entire phone call. Do you need help? You tune that call out and glance on the side and start when you recognize them. They're one of they're the one who helped you at Poppy, Poppy's. You glance at the teetering coffees, your balance interrupted momentarily. Yes, please. They pluck the coffees from you and smile faintly, gesturing, gesture, gesturing for you to lead them where you're going. Thank you. No problem. F to the headmistress? Yeah. You tune back into the call just as they finish. Press 9 to quit. Irritably, you aggressively press, push 9 with your finger and decide to try again another day. Pardon, you drop this. They hold out a slip of paper, and though you don't remember having something that size on you, you take it away from them, giving them a grateful smile. Thank you, it seems I'm in need of a lot of help today. <laughs> Cherry Coke hair. 10 out of 10. <laughs> yeah, there definitely was, on the desk. MJ is staring at Finch, and you almost feel like you need to walk away to let them have whatever discussion they're having with their eyes. Good to see you. Finch nods to you and MJ walks away, expertly avoiding anybody in the crowd. No, I, hopefully we're not going to be climaxing on the desk at work. When you unfold the paper, you feel your heart rate spike. Change the plans and newest acolyte find us at, in the heart of the school you had been doing your best to pretend it wasn't happening but the cult of eva still existed and still had you still have to show up to that meeting if only to help out miranda is everything all right yeah folding it back up you stuff it into your pocket and tuck the notebook under your arm again here i'll take these up thank you for helping you rush into the building not bothering to hear their response too focused on tonight to slow down you could have waited MJ turns to the person behind them. I'm not a good actor. Oh boy. Miranda goes over the notes with deep focus and lips pursed. I have no idea where it could be. I'll lead you there tonight. You open your mouth. The desire to know at this very second is too strong, but she raises her hand. I'm attempting to make it more mysterious rather than scary. You don't really understand how that will help, but you suppose she's trying and really you don't want to think about this anymore. I- alright, if you insist. Now come here. Just to take her orders and even- maybe even liking it, you do as you're told, leaning in when she directs you to, happy to be a distraction from her never-ending work. Why am I here? Why does this feel like an intervention? I am once again offering- I will tape your mouth shut. Mia, although uncomfortable from her injuries, looks like she never even had a fight with Bella. She insists that it hurts, but you saw her not even three minutes ago do a flip because Elena said she couldn't. Elena sits in the chair and allows her to see the door in case someone does come in with the intention of actually drinking coffee or something, but otherwise is utterly not concerned about her job. And for some reason, I personally would love to hear what she has to say. Mia points out excitedly. Yes, more from you. Thank you. We just... You're sure... Aren't you? We're a little late mentioning this, but you kind of need to be sure. It could change your life. Oh my fucking god. Appearing out of nowhere, they come from behind when they notice everyone staring at them. They shrug. Saw a crowd. How did you even get on that side? You glance out the window. The weather has turned sharply stormy and now it's pouring rain outside. You watch the students rush to get in, some with jackets, others umbrellas, a few holding a textbook over their head, and some either with nothing or have and giving up on being dry. You sit close to the window, nervously tapping your nails on the desk as you wait. Miranda said she would come and meet you here at 7. It's quickly approaching. What if she doesn't come? Would that be so bad? What if the cult decides to follow up on you and you're by yourself? Or what if you're simply left alone? You feel ill. The door opens and your head turns sharply to see who it is. Maybe a professor. Maybe a student searching for a, a forgotten item. Or maybe the door is just broken and someone needs to fix the hinges. Maybe that's who's here. Little crow. 
She wears this incredibly serious expression on her face, except instead it's just of it just being serious. She looks weighted down. Are you ready? Uh, I guess so. Yes, there's no time for there's no time for me to be anything but always so brave. A grave look descends on her. You should be careful not to run into danger so often, love. You finally stand and circle around the desk to get to Miranda reaching out, but Miranda catches you completely off guard and yanks you into a hug. No, not quite. She's clutching at you too desperately for it to be quite that. Do not, do not leave me. Again. Uh, the what option is grayed out. I won't. Good. No matter what, little bird, I love you. Chills go down your spine from her tone. It's ominous and extremely terrifying. If only because of the nature of what you're about to do. Miranda has taken this seriously and she has warned you to do the same. Still, there's nothing quite as scary as walking into a room knowing you are weak and they know more of you than you know them. You hate being at a disadvantage, which really made this as fr a frustrating year, f very frustrating year for you. Miranda finally lets go of you, and vaguely you can feel where she had dug her nails into you. It burns pleasantly, and you feel grounded by the pain. And really, how terrible could the cult be? I mean, it's just a cult. If they say anything completely strange, well, you've been proxy trained, so you doubt you'll be that you'll be too surprised. You take a deep breath, your mind starts buzzing and looming with a looming reality. Something is going to happen. You just can't tell how it will go for you. Let's go. Yes, I follow me. And if all else fails, at least you can rely on Miranda being completely unable to handle her own emotions. You've never actively spent the later hours of the day in the university itself, just out on the town or in your dorm, and consequently aren't prepared for how dark it gets when the sun sets. You can barely see two feet in front of you, only when you use your peripheral vision can you register where the walls beside you are. Miranda is holding your hand once you realize you did not have the university layout memorized. Honestly, we can't all be in charge of this place. She had immediately insisted on remaining in contact with each other, for both safety and ensure you don't get lost. You're glad you agreed, because you would probably be walking in circles by now. Miranda is muttering to herself what you think is directions. Not that you can understand what she's saying. Suddenly, she stops in her tracks and turns to you. You can see the moon reflected in her eyes from a window conveniently placed nowhere, helpful to actually light the hall at night. Why do they not have lights at night? Lamps? Torches? Anything? We're here. The unspoken, this is your last chance to change your mind. Something in your bones tells you that you shouldn't, by all means. Miranda could have just taken you to a location and went by herself. She didn't technically need you, but she had immediately placed you with her. There's something in there, and you want to know what it is. You first, or me? You. You give her a weak smile. Really, how strange could it be? Take it, taking a deep breath, you step into the room. You just turned 25 when you met her. She's a year older than you, and she is quite possibly the most intense person you have ever met in your life. She dresses nicely, and she glares at you whenever you pass by each other. It's 1976. Shit, sorry. You're new, and frankly, everyone seems to glare at you a little bit, but nothing can beat the vicious way she tells you to. Get out of my way. You rear back, you know, somewhere in your bones, that she is mean. She has a pros... Prop... Propensi propensity? Never. Propensity? That's a word. For cruelty, especially if someone wrongs her. It's the only way she has survived this long. I said I was sorry. You snap back, quiet in the same kind of protective sense. You will not let her walk all over you just because she's beautiful. Quickly, you gather what was dropped in and unceremoniously dropping them back into her arms, completely ignoring her incredulous expression. And then you walk away. She stares after you. Was that stairs? Fuck. Yeah. Fuck. You find each other again in the library. One more like she walks up to you and demands your attention. I would like to apologize. She grits it out slowly, but shockingly looks sincere. Okay. You lean back, waiting. Miranda only clenches her jaw for a moment before closing her eyes to likely find momentarily inner peace. Yeah, I, I did. Monk was here, so 
It was pretty nice. <sighs> That's it. I am sorry for being so... She looks aside. This is rehearsed for a moment. Unnecessarily rude. You don't sound sorry. Your mouth quirks up. You don't really care anymore, but pushing her buttons is more fun than you thought it would be. And what is that? Is it supposed to sound like? She re reacts almost immediately before stopping from either noticing your expression or her own slip. Pursing her lips, you almost see amusement in her eyes. Thank you for your thank you for your apology, Miranda. One day you simply collide. You've been balancing precariously in the realm between friends and more, but neither of you have wanted to risk the so societal persecution that would follow if you were to be wrong. Miranda, softer when she was alone, Jesus. Softer when she was alone with you wouldn't go too far past chaste physical contact, resting her hand on your arm, playing with your hair, sitting close. And you wouldn't push past a little more than friendly comments, things that could be classified as friendly if you really tried. Till suddenly Miranda turns to you, full of trepidation, something you so rarely see in her, and tells you. You have thrown a wadded up napkin at the TV, no, t no signal screen tauntingly blaring back at you you aren't sure what's wrong with it now since the turning since turning the knob had done no about nothing so you have resolved to sit back down and do something else feather hmm she leans a little closer than usual towards you a sudden shoot of bravery making her take the leap would you please kiss me and you do oh eve is born two years later and she is everything No, you're, you're lying. She fights against you, your brain hazy and unable to comprehend as it tries to flick between memories too fast. A birth and a death happen at once. I'm sorry, ma'am, if we had noticed it sooner. A yelp emanates from the doctor, a red handprint forming as Miranda screams. We don't know if it'll work. I have to try. Please let me test it first. No. You stumble back, shocked by her volume. She holds a tube in her hand as she shakes, and it takes you a moment to realize she is crying. <laughs> Honestly. I can't lose you, not both of you. What makes you think I can? Feather, love, I know you must be overwhelmed. There are so many people here in the now. Their faces co are covered, but mostly, but most importantly... I can feel Miranda behind- You can feel Miranda behind you, holding you still to avoid any falling or running. I still need to beat RE8. Cautiously you turn, your mind is hazy as two lives collide and fight for space. Mother, are they ready? Let them sit. She hisses at them, and almost in a daisy- and Almost in a daisy reach- up and touch her wings. There are so many of them, and they are so dark. Oh. Miranda turns herself back to you, wings puffer puffing ever so slightly. Your eyes. What had once been so starkly blue, intense in the way that you had felt utterly seen in a somewhat uncomfortable way, and blue enough that she did not handle unexpected sunlight well, was now gold. She was quite literally an avian goddess. I'm terribly sorry to have told. I'm terribly sorry to have told you like this, but I didn't see any other w another way. You don't sound sorry. I'm not. I'm so very pleased to have you here, with me. How am I here? When you left me, she gets agitated at the memory, and even though you don't quite have the whole picture, you can tell somewhat vaguely what she's talking about. It must have been one of your blackouts. I did not handle it well. It was so very lost without you and Eva. And we had already been talking. She pauses, brow furrowing. When our Eva died, both of us were not willing to accept it, and so we decided to look for outside help. Surely there must have been a way to bring her back to us. Eventually, we had a testing serum, something to make us immortal, and I chose to test it because you could. Before you could. Her wings spread. 
It was not perfect, but it worked. So I'd spent the following months recreating it, perfecting it for you when an aggressive clicking comes from her anger flaring. They took you from me as well. If I had been only two minutes quicker, you would have been separated from me at all. You would have never been separated from me at all. But I was already trying to get our Eva back. And we were so close, but I... I... She gets this look on her face, guilty and ashamed all at once, and then she levels her expression. I made a few concessions here and there to get you back when we finally got the sign that it had worked. That I had gotten you back, I was so happy. But then the Keeper... She nods. She nods to a figure in some sort of special attire. They've been most likely skulking to the side, trying to avoid any conversation. Told me that you had been reincarnated instead. How? Did you even know when you saw me in the library? I knew before that. I was there on purpose. Pestering me the whole day for your whereabouts. Oh yes, everyone, remove your cowls. Yes, mother. She didn't even yell at you for not wearing it. I knew she wouldn't. Sorry. They nod to you. They were the one in the back, the keeper. Slowly, you see more people lower their hood and come face to, fi face, to face to your friends. Feather, I would tear this world apart for you, for Eva. Us. The story is so long. <laughs> Yeah, this one's definitely... <laughs> this story is so long, after all. I've been shown that it, this isn't our first or even our second life. Wild. <laughs> Look, Elena has a shift to go to after this. Wild and frantic golden eyes find yours and pin them down, desperate to see you, have you, love you. Well? Well? She's your literal soulmate. She broke the laws of the universe and did whatever it took to be with you. I can see why this route was last. Absolutely ridiculous. Miranda's wings shrink on themselves and you, and you grip her tighter so you, you, she cannot let go. My little crow. She hesitates before gently prying you away from her so you can twist and look at you in arms length away. Will you stand by my side? Uh, I'm guessing, of course. Don't you listen? Of course I will. I promised I wouldn't leave. Her eyes flash, and she quickly brings you back into her arms, wings curling around you. Oh, I will keep you to that. The people around you, they're your friends, your family. You see Mia gag at the display of affection, and even Elena is playing some sort of game of tag with B, much to the annoyance of Bella. Oh, she looks less upset and more like the student council president you remember, cold and unfeeling. She glances over at you and sneers, nothing to see. These are your people, and you had been so afraid, but you already knew them. It's going to be me and you, and soon little Eva. She's murmuring directly into your ear, a low please clicking sound. Nobody's going to take you away from me ever again. No, you think you won't let that happen either. You clutch her as she takes something from Avery and sets it against your neck. It will hurt, but only for a moment. Unimportant in the grand scheme of it all, Feather. Pushing, in here, pushing it in, you hear the syringe push down. No going back. Not now. Not ever. You're mine. An indeterminate amount of time later. Have you met the headmistress yet? No, but I heard, like... The direct descendant of the original or something. Yeah. Students walk leisurely to their classes, chattering excitedly. Did you hear that, Mira? There's rumors you're a descendant of the original, Miranda. As if I could be anything but the original. Many lives have been led, led since that extremely stressful night. You're the original to me. She scoffs and throws a waddled up wadded up draft that had not been to her standards at you. It barely clears her desk. Do not try baseball any time soon. I won't. You hum and continue your observation out the window. You guys should go to the cafe down the, down the road. The barista at the counter. Elena is so funny and the coffee's so good. Anyway, what are we talking about? The headmistress. I heard she's an immortal demon sent to torture students who piss her off. 
You almost spit out your coffee at that, much to Miranda's irritation. Really? Because I heard her assistant was sent by, like, God himself or something, because they're the longest lasting one yet. And they get students out of the trouble sometimes. Plead to that assistant, not the headmistress. Got it. Mira, how much paperwork do you have left? She opens her mouth to give you an answer that you don't want a lot, but there's frantic yelling, presumably down the hall from the office. <laughs> yeah, she has to permanently work at this cafe forever and ever. Imagine having to work at Starbucks for the rest of your immortal life. What an existence. Miranda had managed it. Somehow, with many fights and tears, she had done it. Mama. And like always, Miranda is cap incapable of resisting the call. I'm done for the day. Should I just call her when I want you to go home, or what? I have to practically get on my hands and knees for you to say okay. Miranda coos in faux sympathy, kissing your cheeks as she passes by you. Don't worry, Feather. I will give you your due attention. You grumble, picking up your computer and putting it in its case. Don't be like that. I'm getting better, aren't I? I only made two people cry this week. That barely counts. Last week you set the record of three people a day. Mama? Go on. If you don't go get her, she'll come to you and stress you out. You show her in front of you and out the office door and turn to double check if you've forgotten anything. You haven't. Leaving the building and watching the students stare at Miranda is almost all the entertainment you need. They're scared of her, even the freshmen, and you can't help but twitch your mouth as they're in stark awe and terror. It's only made funnier when Eva, who's bouncing on her toes, decides walking is boring and takes off before either of you can stop her. Eva! You pick up the pace and you're sprinting after her, catching her just before she ran to the street. She's giggling in your hold and you find yourself grinning with her and carrying her back to Miranda. That's when you hear it. They're together? They have a kid? Miranda ignores them and reaches for Eva, scolding her gently for running off. When she stands holding Eva's hand, you unabashedly lean over and kiss her. Gross. Come on, Speedy. We gotta take your mama home before she dies of paperwork. Eva, se Eva serious about this matter, nods gravely in the w only way a six-year-old can. Your world is perfect. Nobody will, nobody you love will ever die. Eva's with you. Miranda loves you. Everyone else is inconsequential. I hardly think I'm going to die, but yes, let's go home. She eyes you with the inside joke, but otherwise lets Eva lead her around. She's going the wrong way, but Miranda doesn't seem to have any intention of correcting her. Yes, home. Whew, okay. Wow, that was an ending. That was a route. I can definitely see why that's the last route to play. Because I guess that's the canon route, technically. If we're going to go there. Uh, Wow, that was incredible. Did not think that was going to be... uh, How that ended. Alright. Oh, this is my favorite so far. Still missing some. I think because I haven't done, like, all the secrets. But I have most of the gallery completed. But yeah, that was the last route. Wow. Uh, I guess I don't. <laughs> Wait. So these are concept. Because if I... Some of the secrets I found by accident. Like, I, I didn't use the guide. Uh, during my playthroughs. I just... Did my... Own assumptions of what I thought to choose. Yeah, that, that was a route. Oh my. I might review the game. Since I've played all the routes now. Uh, I'm gonna miss playing this game, but I definitely enjoyed it. Okay, I'll have to gain all the secrets then to get the, the image. But yeah, I had a lot of fun playing this game. Really good game. If you haven't checked it out, feel free to check it out. It is free. It is a really good game. 
Uh, and yeah, I had a lot of fun playing this. I appreciate this game being made. Uh, I will probably be back on Saturday with Resident Evil Village. And I will see y'all then. Bye-bye.